My name's Owen, and I'm the Dungeon Master of our Return of the Giants 5th Edition Homebrew Campaign. Hi, I'm Ali. I'm playing Lyra, the Eldoran Spore Druid, and she is just a little bit obsessed with mushrooms. Hi, my name's Simon. I'm playing the character of Ember. I'm a wildfire druid who's on a quest to be the very best there ever was. Hi, I'm Dave, and I play Harry Harrington, the Harringon, the roguish merchant with the heart of gold. My name is Christian. I'm playing Bartholomew, the romantic dancing owl and paladin of devotion. Hi, my name is Matt, and I'll be playing Niall Silverwind, the owl and way of the sympathy Hey guys, I'm Jared. I play the character of Thrain, the boisterous frost giant the Goliath, half of the giant barbecue. Hello there, lovely listener. This is just a warning to let you know that this episode of Return of the Giants may contain adult language or adult themes. Hello, greetings! Welcome one and all to our Return of the Giants 5th edition homebrew campaign. It is wonderful to have you all join us. Thank you so much. If this is your first time joining us, there's a little bit you've missed before this. 43 other episodes, which uh, will be appearing just over there for you to go and check out at your leisure whenever you want to. But for those of you who have been with us for the whole journey, it is wonderful to have you join us once again. We are going to j- be jumping straight back into the action very, very shortly. Only a very quick announcement before we begin. Um, thank you so much, everybody who's been watching the demo playthrough of Synergy that I did. I am taking it as uh, long format videos. The, the full playthrough without cutting it up is your preferred version and you would like to see more of Synergy. Done. I love it. You have asked. I will absolutely deliver. A delight for me to deliver. Um, it's there almost are like no- the demographic of people that like watching streams. Exactly. So there will be more <laughs> of Synergy coming as well as some other really cool uh, games coming out soon. There's um, there's another one I've seen that I'm looking at that's called The Falconer. And it's all about like, um, I th- let me double check what it's called exactly. But it's the um, it's like a city building game with a little bit of a twist to it. Bulwark Falconer Chronicles. So I'm going to be doing a demo of that because the demo is out as well. And that game launches in a couple of weeks. So if you really enjoy it, I'll definitely definitely play more of that one too because they look really, really fun. And it's really cool playing some indie games I otherwise wouldn't have known about that I am so thoroughly enjoying playing that are, are brilliant. So I'm very, very excited for that. Um, but yeah, if there's any other games you'd like me to check out, hit me up in the comments, let me know. Otherwise, if you comment on the, uh, on the video for Synergy, I'll know there as well. The only other announcement we have for tonight Ali is unable to join us, so I will play the character of Lyra tonight. Now, even though, those of you who are watching us on Twitch and on YouTube, even though you can't see Jared's uh, camera, he is with us here. I'm getting getting through from the producers. He is here. Yeah, I am. Hello. He's here. Yeah. Hello, bro. <laughs> um, definitely not rehearsed. It would have been way smoother if it was. Uh, Jared is here. Unfortunately, uh, Jared took a, uh, he took a stick to the eye. Uh, he used to be an adventurer like you, but he took a stick to the eye and he is now unable to uh, adventure with his camera on. Um, how, how is your eye going, mate? Uh, looks like it's, it's it pretty is, sore. It is better. Mm. It's better than Monday. Monday was way worse. Um, yeah. But it's still really uncomfortable. It's still a bit uncomfortable and I'm wearing an eye patch. And it's still quite watery as well and quite light sensitive. Yeah, it is. So um, I, I, did, I had yesterday off and I did go to work today. Um, with some nice protective sunnies on I'm taking. Oh, so. well, the thing is, I wore like sunglasses, pro- like protection ones too, that like wrap around. But like it hit me in the cheek and then like bounced Falls up and went un- and slid under yeah. the glasses. That sucks, man. Yeah, it was it was in like it was it's something called a tangled lignum. And um, this grows to be really big bushes. But this particular one was just a small little strand. Um, and it was in my blind spot. So when I went, when I bent down to go and hand weed this plant, I was like hand weeding. Um, I didn't even see it. And then it just like, yeah, hit me in the cheek and slid under my glasses, which is so annoying. Natural 20 from so, the plant against your AC of yeah, exactly. 16, 17 with eye protection on. Yeah, exactly. It was crazy. And now that so, um, even bigger. <laughs> <laughs> if he's actually lost vision though, Simon, you're going to regret that joke. Hundred <laughs> uh, percent. Nah, Simon and I yeah, being I Simon and I with the optical and ophthalmic training, uh, we, we've got it. We, we're a bit confident that that's not enough to uh, cause permanent vision loss. But um, no, no, <laughs> you did take a risk on that not. side. <laughs> I respect it. Um, I so pl- pleased you are joining us here, Jared. But obviously, if uh, if the eye gets too sore, you need a break. Um, just obviously take take whatever time you need. Just comments, and, and I'll take over Thrain for the evening. 
No problem. Yeah, that's all good. I, I powered through it on Monday. I nearly like I, I nearly missed. I said I was going to miss Monday, but then halfway through, I got FOMO and I decided to just like power through it. <laughs> just just as well you did because it was um, it, 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 the Curse of Strahd group tends to go off the rails a bit when Thrain's not sorry not Thrain when uh, Luther's not there to kind of like pull them back on track. Uh, so it was just as well you were there actually. <laughs> I really need... have become the the father of the group. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the parent. Yeah, that's, that's really cute. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's a totally um, different character to Thrain. Yeah, very, very different. Um, the only other fun announcement I have to share, for those of you who are fans of our Avatar Legends campaign, I have some excellent news. We are going to be back, most likely, next week. I'm currently working through the character art of each of the players. Um, I think I've got descriptions from everyone. I've almost finished Andrew's. I've started on Archie's. I'm going to be getting to Dave's and Bree's next, and then I'll do Brandon's last. We will have all of them hopefully ready in time for the stream. I will do my best to smash them all out. Um, but we'll be doing our Session Zero. It is a Kiyoshi era campaign. It is a short campaign. And I know I said this last time, and we went for like 70 episodes, but I mean it this time only going to be between 10 and 15 episodes okay that's how long it's going to be and when i when this blows out to 30 and someone has clipped this and throws this in my face i never said that <laughs> there's no evidence yeah, i'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you said 10 to 50 episodes right you can't, yeah exactly yeah exactly um yeah. you can't can't believe what you see on the internet uh <laughs> so i will try and keep it as a short form campaign before we go back into our follow up with the same characters from book one. Um, this is sort of like an interlude campaign because we wanted to track Kyoshi and because Kyoshi era is such a popular one for a lot of the fans of Avatar. Um, the Shadow of Kyoshi books uh, are really, really good. So I thought we could have a bit of fun with those. So we'll be we'll be jumping in with that and then we'll continue on with our normal Avatar campaign before too long. But I think that's pretty much all the fun announcements I have to share. We're super keen to be jumping in. I'll do a thorough recap. Obviously, Simon wasn't with us last week, so I will do a, uh, a really, really good recap for you, Sai. Um, did you get a chance to, to catch up, or um, is the recap going to be your essential information? The recap is going to be my essential information. That's It's crazy. It's almost like you're working really hard at the moment. <laughs> yeah, maybe just a little bit. Little it's, bit. All so. it's weird. I, I don't know where I get that from, but I'm just getting this in my brain that you might be working hard. Uh, awesome. No, that's all good. I have a very, very thorough recap. So without any further ado, let us jump into the session and I will get us up to speed for the beginning of the campaign, uh, beginning of the session. The Tempest Adventuring Guild, a name now legendary across the lands of Nostea, has formed a brand new team. Lyra, Niles, Harry, Ember, Thrain, and newcomer Bartholomew are exploring the vast caverns of the Underdark. Drawn below by rumours of stone giants taking over territory, it has come to light that the Duragar are providing the stone giants with slaves as part of a massive mining operation. With the Underdark so full of danger, the team sought refuge amongst a myconid colony in the depths of a large mushroom forest, in return eliminating a tribe of Kuatoa who had been harassing the colony. While there, the team met with a renegade Lothsworn drow called Zaylan, who enlisted the help of the group in throwing off some assassins still on her tail. The team split in two, Harry and Zaylan making their way toward the surface, while the rest of the party travelled with the Deep Gnome guides toward the city stronghold of Blindenstone. Both parties were ambushed by the assassins, but while the larger group were able to fend off the attacks, even killing two of their pursuers, Harry was taken prisoner after being knocked out by drow poison. Luckily for Harry, the rest of the team discovered his plight while attempting to use a sending stone to throw off the drow assassins, successfully convincing them to meet with Harry on the way to the to meet with Harry on the way to the old wizard tower the Society of Brilliance use as a base in the Underdark. On the way to the meetup point, the team made a brief detour via Blindenstone, learning a massive draconic monstrosity called a Bahia had taken up residence, the city now seemingly abandoned. During his captivity, Harry decided to use his charm and wit to try to win over some of the assassins, and while he was able to build up some rapport with two in particular, he soon found himself bound and gagged, tied to a post and left out in the open as bait. With the sounds of slithering coming from either side of the canyon walls, Harry decided to try and appeal to his patron for help, a call which was answered with a sudden powerful eldritch blast from his hands, destroying the ropes binding him. Just in time, 
The rest of the team arrived at the canyon, Thrain and Bart rushing down into the lower section to try and get to Harry, while Ember, Lyra and Niles took to higher ground. Emerging from the walls of the canyon, large worm-like insects rushed toward the party with a horrifying chittering noise, but at the last second suddenly halted, a high-pitched whistle sounding from above. We left off last session as the drow shadow blade in kite and armor suddenly appeared on the upper level of the canyon, calling out to the team. I think we have a lot to talk about. And that is where we left off last session. I'm going to bring you all across to a map, just for your reference. Uh, I'm not saying that we need to be on a map for any specific reasons, but um, I just think it'd be helpful for, for you to sort of see where you are a little bit. And I will describe the location uh, in a bit more detail again for those who uh, might not remember or for, for those of you who couldn't join us last week. The canyon itself is fairly wide. It's not a perfect rectangle. You can see where the large stone walls kind of give way to certain sections, but at its widest point in the very center, it's about 80 feet wide. As you look down the, uh, the end of the cavern, you can see that the edges of the canyon, the walls are about sort of 50, 60 feet high, ranging to about 70 feet high at the highest points as the craggy tops sort of create this very uneven terrain around the surface. Small clustered bushes grow here, very tough, hardy plants eking out a very meager existence on the water bubbling up from a spring on the eastern side of the canyon wall. The pool of water around the base there uh, actually is split and has opened up a section between two of the rock walls, creating a very small rocky outcropping in the very, very middle. Harry, that's a, not too far from where you had actually been bound, um, a dead shrub position just in front of this sort of rocky outcropping. As you rush into position, I believe we left off... Uh, oh, I better take Kongchi off the map. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. That is true. Kongchi is not with you. Um, you had just gotten in range with Tim. So at the moment, Harry and Thrain are in the very middle of this box canyon. Around them, these worm-like creatures with like these in like very, very sharp, large beaks in the center of their mouths and tentacles around the outside, almost like an octopus arms. Uh, four of these tentacles coming out from the center of this beak ready to pull food or prey towards this snapping, sharp uh, appendage. Um, currently, you two are surrounded by three of these creatures. Bartholomew and Tim, who had rushed down to the canyon to try and get level with Thrain and Harry as soon as possible, there's one that has emerged from the rock wall heading towards you. Uh, Ember and Lyra had stayed on the top, knowing that their spell casting would be particularly effective if they were up high and able to rain down fire and magic from above. Um, I had you take the western pathway. Niles, you had taken to the skies. I've had you take a little bit to the east just because uh, with the descriptions, we're kind of working with this rotated 45 yeah. degrees. So I've just rotated the map to make it easier to see. Um, for sure. For those of you who are joining us on uh, on YouTube and Twitch, uh, you'll be able to see the map appearing right now. Whoa, so, magic. Magic. The magic of editing. Uh, I won't zoom in too much, but I'll get us into position. As you hear this whistle ring out, we left off last session as you see um, the drow in kite and armor, the woman step out onto the rocky outcropping, dropping a sort of silvery metallic object down into her robes once again. And as she stands there and looks down at all of you, you hear her call out across the canyon. I think we have some things to talk about. As she says this, I need to know if anyone's making any sudden moves, any uh, immediate actions or reactions. Otherwise, I will keep us in kind of like a paused state and carry on with her speaking to you. Hmm. I think I think Niles is probably probably reading the situation a little bit, and he's probably not acting too quickly. Just kind of waiting to see. I guess what happens next, not doing anything too offensive or anything. I haven't just... really had a chance to talk to Harry, so I'm just going to quickly say, so little one, how are you feeling? You okay? You look not too bad. Yeah, I'm a bit tired, but um, yeah, I'm all right. Um, that's their leader um, in the little pick. Um, they, they know about 
the ex Naomi, ex Navy, murder hay on the other end. And um yeah, they they just really want Salen who might be at the Tower of Brilliance. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I'll take your word for it. Sure. Bart he... does want sorry, we uh, I, I was going to say that maybe Harry would be like... So the, the whistle stopped the Gricks, right? So he, Yeah, these, he these worm-like words. creatures have frozen. You can see them sort of rising up. They're roughly sort of like seven, eight feet long. They're, they're pretty decently large, these creatures, about sort of medium creature size. As they raise up, they're about as tall as a, as a, as a human would be. Um, you can see them sort of swaying softly these sightless eyes still turning towards you, keeping an eye on you. I'll uh, put a picture in chat so that you can see them in uh, in all their high quality. So the only other thing that Harry would be doing is like moving towards Bart and Tim, just slowly, not like... about to say the exact same thing. Um, Bart is going to try to, with Tim, um, probably place like a, a hand on Tim's chest as Tim's like a dumb zombie, isn't going to be able to read the situation and is going to try to try to just slow Tim down. Mm. Um, so that we can both slowly approach the two in front. There was um, one or two other things, but that's movement-wise. Actually, also Niles. Uh, so Niles can really only see these Gricks and I guess the Drow Lady, who's made herself known. Um, I guess from my position, sort of up in the air and, and over to the side, I, I guess I'm probably more worried about any other combatants that might be positioned up on the walls here. So I'd probably be. I guess just like keeping an eye on things, but also sort of like glancing around to see if I can spot anyone hiding. Could I get you to roll me a perception or investigation check, your choice? Definitely going to be a perception check. Owen. I thought it might be. Uh, yeah. Let's give it a whirl. Oh! Okay. That's a, that's a, natural, that's a natural one. <laughs> yeah. That's a natural one. That's a, that's a real shame. I would, like, I would like to add that I started last session with a perception check, which I critted on. And I like, and today, crit. It's, it's karma, man. It's just a crit fail. It's, <laughs> it's not a good crit. No. Niles, Eve, Eve, like, and it's a six. I mean, as you look around, there's really not much here. You can't imagine that there's anyone out in the open. The problem as yeah. well, right, is that the walls of the cavern are littered mm. with these holes, roughly sort of like, four feet to five feet in diameter. Some of them slightly larger, some of them slightly smaller, but there are so many of these circular holes. It's kind of impossible to know if anyone's hiding within them. There's That's no a, way to know. Yeah, not even the Greeks, but they're, they're big enough for the drought yeah. to sort of just be crouched with a crossbow. Yeah. I, yeah, I think Niles doesn't say anything, but there's probably a feeling, he's probably, he's wise enough to sort of know that she, this drow lady wouldn't be going into this situation just with bricks. There's got to be something else. Um, yeah. But yeah, he he, he, st- he just he's just watching at the moment. Um, the two things that Bart wanted to do, other than moving forward, one was my beak uh, is a hard thing, unlike lips. Yeah. Um, and if I were to whistle with a performance check, do I think I could copy the whistle that she's holding? The tone and pitch? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, so it was, it was incredibly high pitched. That was the thing that kind of stood out was it's this very, very high pitched tone. Um, but could I get you to please roll? I'm going to say... I can't test it because then she'll know that I'm doing it. This is just in in my yeah in my mind palace. <laughs> I, I will say then, rather than rolling, because I was going to get you to roll to see if you if you had basically if you were proficient with whistling, <laughs> like how much practice you've had whistling. Okay, I'm happy yeah, to do it. That's what I'm thinking. Aside for like the rest of Bart's sort of backstory. Yeah, do you want to do it as a performance check just to see if you've had much exposure or much practice with with mimicry and with whistling? Am I a whistler? We'll find out. I'm yeah. not too bad of a whistler. 18? 18. Yeah, pretty good. Birds are phenomenally good at hearing and copying sound. Owl's not necessarily known for it, but I mean, the, 
you're not really an owl, you're an aracocra, owl and aracocra. So you have the, even though you might look very owl-like, you're not an owl, you're, you're a completely different species. And I'm willing to say the aracocra, maybe a little bit like their cousins, the kenkus, have some, have some proficiency, let's say, in, in mimicry. Um, you're not sure you'll be able to get the tone exactly right with your first go. It was very, very high. The problem is that to get that whistle that high, and on that exact pitch, which you, you get the sense the pitch was very important with your, I'm going to say with your performance check of 18, your analysis of the musicality of the tone, um, the pitch was very important. And it was also the length. It was a very short, short sharp blast on the whistle. Okay. You think the so, volume and the pitch is going to be the hardest things to emulate here. So I just need to get Thrain to kick me in the nuts first. I, I mean, that would help with vocal cords, but not so much with whistling. <laughs> I was thinking the pitch, like really high pitched. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. And then the other main thing is other than moving, because um, that's just part of movement, Bart is going to have a held action, not to whistle, but actually to activate his um, channel divinity for the sacred weapon to um, basically emanate light, turn it into a magical weapon in case shit hits the fan and I need to strike one of these bricks. So just one hand on the blade, one hand on um, Tim as we move forward slowly. That's, that's what we're doing. Ember, you should probably find out what you and Lyra are doing. I'm going to say Lyra is going to kind of match to your efforts right now. Uh, for your benefit, Bartholomew, Lyra is going to call out, Tim, follow Bartholomew. Just kind of like help out a little bit. Uh, Both hands okay. instead on the blade. <clears throat> Knowing from last time I saw one of the drows that uh, he was using an illusion, I'd be doing something similar to what Niles is doing, like trying to check out the area and uh, see if I can find anyone hiding in the bushes or, you know, in the, the wall face underneath me. Yeah, could I get a perception check or investigation check, please, Si? Yeah, sure can. That is... Oh, another nat one. What? <laughs> oh, oh my really god! Long. Oh, wow. what is happening? Uh, all these people on the wall uh, just the kind of drow that they're all as capable as he is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ember <laughs> and Niles. Drow live underground. It's possible they could be hiding underwater. If they can stay underground, this is your natural one. <laughs> if they could, I mean, that pool of water over by the side. I mean, you could hide in that under the Shadow water. Face. I kind of Shadow like bubbles. <laughs> I mean, you can see that the the water's quite dark. If you were to like immerse yourself under the water, maybe hold onto a rock, you could hide pretty well in there. That's your natural one. <laughs> wow. I mean, very, uh... how do you know they're not already there wearing Grick suits? I mean, they could have killed and skinned the Grick and be currently the disguised Grick's as Grick. Oh, yeah. It could be. I mean, it's possible. Are we getting those predator vibes, you know, covered in the dirt and come oh, yeah. out of a sudden? Yeah. I mean, yep. you're pretty sure one of those bushes next to the uh, next to the water hole, next to that small uh, patch of water, you're pretty sure it just moved. Uh, that's your natural one for both of you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Intense. But yeah, Lyra's gonna, that, I'll say you can, no, you. I was going to say, aside from that, I'll just be um, waiting to hear out what this person has to say. I don't want to make any sort of movements with other people that are underneath that are yeah. surrounded by enemies. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Lyra's going to turn to you and go, um, so we're thinking, like, we probably can still talk our way out of this, right? Like, if we, as long as we don't insult them, as long as we don't, like, do anything too rash or crazy, I think we can still kind of talk our way out of this. Um, so we just do, oh, Shit, it's Thrain and Harry down in the middle. I was going to say, look at the person that's closest. I, yeah. Let's find out how this goes. Um, I'm just going to get some spells ready then. And if it all goes to shit, I'm just going to rain down spells from above. And, and if you can like get them out of there with Flicker, maybe that's what we need to do. Um, hoot Hoot, plus seven persuasion coming in to save the day. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Alrighty. As you... As... as and none of you take any immediate aggressive actions, kind of all reacting and, and taking a pause. You watch as the drow standing up on the rise um, slowly lowers her hand down onto a sword at her waist, a very familiar looking sword strapped to her belt. 
Harry's sword. On her back, she has an enormous, um, almost like a curved scimitar, sim similar to like a capesh, where it has like the slightly curved half moon blade with that jagged yeah. piece at the back. Yeah, um, I've I've homebrewed now that the drow blades are going to be capeshes because it's perfect for like close quarter <laughs> fighting, underground fighting. I mean, it's perfect for the drow. Um, so yeah, as you can see, she has a her her weapon, a capesh, on her back. But I mean. As she rests her hand on the hilt of us, on the hilt of Harry's sword, and looks out across the rest of you, she turns to you, Harry. You escaped from those bonds rather quickly. I thought we had taken away your spellcasting focus. Uh, it was me for a few while. I just uh, we we loose a bit. She gives you a very, very like almost judging expression. The flash of light from your magic lit up the whole canyon. Don't try and lie to me, Rabbit. We've established you, you, that doesn't end well for you. I, I, I didn't know there was light. I couldn't see anything. So you're telling me... You're telling me magic just burst forth from you. You had no... Completely unknown to you how it occurred. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, you know, that's actually the truth. Um... That's, yeah, that's actually the truth, believe it or not, but, uh, like, we, the, the, the Greek scared me after, after I broke loose, so I just, I just started running. Harry, how do you know the names of these creatures? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> just as a quick, just a quick thought. You can call them wormies if you like, or... It, these, uh, scary little wormy things with tentacles and suction kips, the, the beaks, I mean, the worms... Worms have beaks, but these are these are pretty scary beaks, so I in ran. In the interest of not being a dick, she goes, Oh, you like our little pet Grix, do you? They've come in handy on more than one occasion. Now come on, you lot. Feel free to step forwards. Very curious to hear what you all have to say. No I Zaylin mean, we, we can... about, I notice. Can't see we her anywhere. Know, but we do know where she went. Oh, I'm sure you do. Who was it who contacted us with the Sending Stones? I take it it wasn't. Mirabar? No, sadly not. Mirabar trifled too much. That would be I. Right, and... You're going to try and tell me that that figure we were chasing to the surface wasn't Zaylan. You were in fact telling us the truth and bringing us down here to get your comrade back. And in exchange, you'll provide us with Zaylan's actual location. I just know that we were helping people, and from the sounds of it, that's what Harry was doing as well. You probably want to be more careful who you help in the future. Word of advice. Well, we'll see how this goes, if you have a future. I think we've made a good decision. We've had our lives threatened by you and your cohort on three separate occasions now. You don't. Your lives are not you. under threat. Who has threatened your life? The man you mentioned previously nearly cut my throat clean, along with some of those working for him. Unprovoked? Provoked by words. That is very unprofessional of him. I would be curious to know what words could inspire him to such violence, but I suspect I can hazard a guess. Refusal to cooperate, insulting of him or the matron mother? I'm guessing that's important to your kind, then? Yes, respect is important to our kind. I see. Well, for us, we don't kill people over respect. Are you sure? Well, we're not fighting right now. We're talking. Let's be honest here. If you weren't surrounded by our little pets, I doubt you would be doing much of the talking. Now please examine your companion. He's fine. He is unharmed. I'm a, I'm a bit exhausted. Ken, as she says, if you're free to examine, Bart yeah. did want to get up beside them anyway, like part of the, I um, guess, just his fighting style. So I'm going to take that moment. Away from the, uh, the Greek. Halfway, both of yeah. us, yeah. And look, I do want to take her up on what she just said. I want to make sure there's no sort of like tracking magic shit that he's not wounded. Can I do 
medicine check. He was unconscious for a lot of it, so not even yeah. metagaming. Like, there could be shit that we don't know about. Medicine check sounds me. good. <laughs> yeah, you can make a medicine check. Not the best at it, but just a pat down is always a pat down. Yeah, five. Five. Can Harry help by checking himself as well? And like, yeah, sure. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can you can roll again. Uh, you can have advantage on this, Bartholomew. Please get a natural one. And then it could be like... It's better seven. by a little bit seven. Is there anything I obvious? Mean, you're not familiar with Harangon anatomy. I mean, there's no obvious cuts apart from one on his... Was it your... Was it your midsection, I think? It would have been somewhere in my back because I was running back, away. Back, because you were running, yeah. Um, there's, there's a small cut on his back that's cut through part of his clothing. It's very small, though. It's like a, like a small gash. And it has actually been treated. You can see that someone has placed a poultice on it and that has since removed the the area is closed and it's scabbed but there still remains of whatever this like leaf was or this this plant life that was placed on it to kind of help it seal up um you're pretty sure that's not harry though <laughs> no nah, i'm kidding i'd be it'd be um, great reveal to have harry suddenly be like ah! <laughs> And be one of the drow. I, I thought about Harry all along. I thought about messaging wow. Dave and being like, "Hey, can you play along with this for a little bit?" But um, I don't. I never. I never want to like do too much uh, shenanigans like that uh, that are outside of your understanding or control. So, I mean, Harry seems okay with your medicine check of seven. If he was bruised, you can't tell. There's fur in the way, similar to the way that feathers get in the way when you're trying to check um, Aracocra or Alan. So not black eyes. He's not bleeding from anywhere. Obvious. He seems fine. Not okay. much you can it tell. It hurts. It hurts. <laughs> you putting it on a bit? Yeah, no, no, no. I was just joking around. <laughs> she cocks her head and looks over. As I'm looking at him, because I'm guessing that would take a couple of seconds, similar to like uh, previously when Harry was talking, I also want to just whisper to Harry, um, where is Zaylin? That one went out to the surface, I think. We got separated. How did you get caught? I was trying to help and be a decoy. She shoved me into these people and then ran. And then I okay, kept okay. supporting her. I get, I get and, you. and I got shot with a poison arrow and, and I KO'd. Well, let's, let's not make light of your work then if you went to this much effort. I reckon you take the lead with this. Let's, let's try to lead them in the wrong direction. If you already spent this much effort trying to save her. She has a good read on me. I think you're here off. She, she, she knew I was lying about some other stuff before. And I also have disadvantage on on, on things because I'm no. exhausted. No. <laughs> no. 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 No, Dave. Naughty. I'll go with the... um. Yeah, the I, I want to have justice for like the effort that he's already put into what he's done rather than just backstepping trying to save Harry's life. My deception's not as good, but with Harry's um helpful little trickery, um, maybe it will help. So yeah, after the medicine check, I'll just look up. I will give a brief look over to Ember and Niles, just making sure both they're still there and if there's mm. no obvious like eye communications of them trying to say something with their eyes as if they've seen something or they have an idea. They're looking intently at the pool, both Ember and Niles. <laughs> really intently. Like, yeah. you're pretty sure Niles hasn't blinked in a while. <laughs> okay, well, I will just... Um, I'll, I'll, I'll speak up again. Uh, okay, Harry, I'm glad you're okay. Everyone else is as well. Threen and Lyra were really worried about you. Um, what now? You tell us, where is Zaylin? Well, first things first, I'll just speak up real quick. You give Harry's sword back. Why? <laughs> Why should we do this? Because it is his. Actually, Thrain does make a good point. Not the fact of a weapon, but if we're going to enter into a negotiation, we should each give one thing at a time. You already owe a debt, a large debt, not just for lies, but for life. What Two of our number are you? dead. They attacked us. We did not attack them. We finished it. 
It's um, unfortunate that they were not strong enough to um, attack us. Well, the fact as you're putting our laws on you, why do our laws mean any less? Because you're in our land, Daywalker. You have come below. Your arrogance. Good point. Coming into our territory, walking around as if the surface, as if it is down here, it is not. You are in our land. You do not have the rights you think you do. The fact that we are talking to you is an act of restraint that you would not be granted in many other drow enclaves. You are lucky my mercy outweighs my wrath. But it does not forever. Do not okay. try me. Well, let's we can also heal with your stone giant problem, his will. Possibly More promises. Hmm? More promises. No promises. I'm going to reach into my pocket. The first part of this negotiation. And I'll pull out the sending stone that belongs to them. I think this is yours. You'll obviously be wanting it back. Yes, we will. Stolen items should be returned. With that, she reaches down to the belt, pulls out Harry's sword, and holds it aloft by the hilt. I'm not going to try any sleight of hand or anything. I'm just going to toss it across the ground and try to land it near, I guess, like this grip. As you as you toss it near the ground, she chucks the sword in the air and then waves her hand, and you watch as a ghostly hand, this kind of like almost slightly clawed hand, raises up almost out of nowhere and grabs the sending stone and then flies back up to her side. <laughs> and drops it into her hand <laughs> yeah uh okay um, she grabs it and the, harry the sword is chucked over the top of one of the grick and lands probably like five feet ten feet in front of you she throws it sort of tosses on the ground it yeah yep. pick it up he gives it a kiss before sheathing it <laughs> yeah she looks at the sending stone tucks it away so where is zaylin i get tired of asking this question and i guess you're going to get more tired because we do have another part of this negotiation that we can take it's in steps patience is a key virtue in these sorts of talks it's true while i may have boundless patience for some unfortunately the grick will only last so long the whistle they know to expect pain when they hear it, and so they freeze in response. They will overcome this if you take too long. Understood, which is why I should speak more hastily. Yes. You reveal you other numbers of your entourage who are here to us, a sign of trust. Something that obviously will remove the layer of surprise that you would have, putting you at a disadvantage. Why would you do that and give us this sign of respect? because we have something else that you want. There was a reason that you were chasing Zaylin? Yes, obviously. What is it that you have that we want? Something of fabric. Cloak. I need more. What are you offering? You're right. It would be very foolish. And an act the of great means- trust to reveal our location to you we do not trust you. The sun's cape. What is this? The item that Zaylin is being chased over after her supposed murder. You watch as her face freezes for a moment, the control slipping just for a moment. And as she looks at you, You have Everasp's cape. How did you get this? Well, you already noticed how silver-tongued our little friend is here. And I'll put a hand on Harry's shoulder. And we already handled your other entourages with all respect. They were strong warriors, but we're capable in many matters. Show me. Prove you have this item. Wait, is Lyra wearing it still? Ember was wearing it. Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, uh, at this point, I'm looking at you, Bart, wondering if you actually want me to 
I'm not going to look at you and I'm going to leave this up to you just for a minute so you can make a decision in case you don't reveal it and then I'm going to take that as like, okay, we need to lie and do something else. Like, yeah. maybe pretend to pull it out or something from like a backpack. So I'm not going to look for just like like half a turn, like three seconds. What I do don't think? necessarily know if I want to reveal that I have it on at this point because Ooh. if we're going to trade for it, do I really want them to know where it is if they just want to take that's it? That's what I was thinking, yeah. So, she, that, needs, that, she needs proof. Hmm. Would I, Owen, be able... I mean, at this point in time, I'm up on a ledge higher up in the, the side. I'm assuming that this person's got their attention focused on Bart and the people in front of them. Absolutely. Would I be able to maybe... I'm assuming it's a, it's a cloak that's straight behind me. Would there be a way for me to subtly drop it off and maybe push it behind me i mean it's pretty simple to just unclip the clasp shrug your shoulders a little bit and then kick backwards yeah absolutely do you want to make me a um i this would kind of fall under sleight of hand but i'm willing for you to do it as an acrobatics check or a sleight of hand check depending on how much of your physicality you're kind of using i'm happy to uh, look uh, it's the same plus for me so 18 sleight of hand not nice. bad oh that's good with That's a awesome. careful, careful shifting of your shoulders, Ember, you unclip and shrug off the cape and then just kick it backwards a little bit, pushing it back. I would then awesome. also hope that yeah. uh, I've got Flicker there, who's quite small, that's standing up on the ledge next to me. Um, depending on what angle that they're looking up at, I'd probably hope that he would try and <laughs> tuck it away underneath a, a bush or something next to us. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try. Like the thing is, Ember is on fire at all times. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, I mean, he's been sitting on my shoulder while I've been wearing it. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. It's true. Um, we, we, did, we did that for, like, contextual, like, fluffery true. to make it sound better, though. He's, he's not really a familiar more than he is, like, a, a manifestation of your fiery powers that we, we have invisible only because it looks cool. Gotcha. <laughs> no, no, as, as, he, as he, like, goes and begins to nudge the, the cape, you watch as the section he nudges begins to smolder and then he pulls back. <laughs> <laughs> if, um, if there's no response what Bart is going to respond with um, is to his the best of his oh I just I had I had an idea uh, it lost lost me for a second oh that's right um, I'm going to just question her we don't want to show it for the same reason you don't want to reveal your kind so instead I will just start this second part of the negotiation with a question before either party takes a step. Do you remember seeing her wearing it when you captured our friend? No. Where is Zaylin? You asked question. We ask a question. Where is Zaylin? She went to the surface world. Ah. <sighs> Where is one of your party people? One. Mm. She nods slowly, pulls down, lifts up the sending stone and whispers something to it, and then lowers it back down again. Well, if she has already left the surface, then your intelligence is really not going to be that useful anymore. You shall have to contact the shadow blades on the surface and rejoin them after we have done disposing of your bodies. Very well. She raises up a hand and flicks her oh. fingers. I'm going to have everyone please roll me initiative. Oh, okay. fuck! Uh, I tried. Uh, I, I tried to really do well. I, I, I really to do it your way, but it did not work. I really didn't see a way out of that very easily. Um, the problem was yeah. you guys had kind of, like, by killing their numbers, really... <laughs> and lying to them consistently, there's... The, the only kind of way out of this was to work with them very, very quickly and pray yeah. that they would spare you, which you did not do. Yeah. You were very, uh, very keen to continue obfuscating. <laughs> it's like I was like seventy percent certain it was going to go to a fight, so I at least wanted to like give them less of an advantage. Uh, oh, okay. Damn it! Uh, Sorry, yeah. guys. All right, no, so we've no, got Harry on. You, you probably see this happen, and Niles just kind of sighs. He's just like, at least we got Harry's uh, blade back. We did get one advantage. That's you got true. Harry's blade back, you did. Absolutely. So, Harry on 29, Thrain on 17, Ember on 16. Oh, Miles, 
Is this blade or is this just like a short sword? <coughs> Did I give back a ring for something important, um, <laughs> Harry? Do you want to uh, reveal? Yeah, I mean, do you spell casting modify? Spell casting focus too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, it okay. is, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, man. Yeah, okay, it's worth it. it is a bit more important. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just a short certain. I was like, no, I it's it's his it's his <laughs> it's his warlock hex blade. So it is it is definitely important. You, you, Five gold pieces for a magic item. <laughs> no, no, no. You 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 definitely did the right thing by getting getting the blade back to him. It is it is yeah. As we've said, not just his like, not just his spellcasting focus. It is also his warlock hex blade. Like a lot um, of Harry's stuff kind of relies on that. Yeah, Question. otherwise I would have just been I would have just been hiding until I got a chance to get a new a new weapon. A DM it had sleep to pack it. Yeah. A DM, I only got a six on the initiative, but I do want to check. Hmm. Does my channel divinity go off the held action? Uh, oh, yeah. What was your channel divinity? Uh, the sacred weapon, just m making it a magical weapon for one minute, plus four to attack rolls, and then forty feet of light. What would be the trigger for you setting it off? The fact when she goes, we'll have to dispose of your bodies, and you're just like, Aah! she, um, she had. I was, I was caught all the way until she said that. As she says, we have to dispose of your bodies, and there was that sort of lingering. She, she'd said something, and it was very ominous. I'd start pulling the blade out, and I know a fire fight's coming. Uh, it's a bonus action. Uh, it's a, a full action. An action to you action. imbue your weapon with uh, positive energy. I, I'm happy to allow it. That's fine. That All right. Positive vibes on the weapon. <laughs> positive Let's vibes go. on the weapon. This is why you're my favorite DM, Owen. This is why you're my favorite. Ah, oh, thanks, Dave. Am I your only DM? <laughs> I did a one shot once with someone else. Um, <laughs> once? <laughs> oh my god, you cheated. <laughs> oh my goodness. I did a one, one shot shots. once with someone else. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Your support means a lot. It meant nothing. It meant nothing. Hold on. Was that was one shot with Owen as well? Like when he was playing with you? So he was even uh, no, so that, anyway. I, I have I've done one one shot that we never completed, and um, the one shot where he played with me. Yes. <laughs> Good to know. Um, just for my mini as well, because I know it'll be important for the Shadow Blades. I have twenty feet of bright light and a further twenty feet for a total of forty of dim light. The bright light I do care about. Let me put that on right now. There we go. Thank you. Brilliant. Alrighty. Let us jump over to the map. Let us start our combat. Now that we have the music, now that we have the lights, the camera, the action. Uh, alrighty. First off, the first person to react rather appropriately is hold on, Harry. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah. um, oh, would you like to use your... Uh, yes, please. Would you like to use your special, uh, special way of sympathy, Monk? Yeah, check. way of sympathy, monk, uh, to change my initiative to match the shadow blade elite. Oh, okay. This is this is fantastic. So uh, Matt is playing a custom monk subclass I've created called the Way of Sympathy. It's all about using your key points to kind of align your key to your enemies. That allows you to kind of play around with initiative, play around with turn orders and things like that, as well as give you resistances or vulnerabilities um, or imply imply uh, uh, apply damage that is. Uh, that an opponent is vulnerable to it. It's all about kind of like aligning your key to, to maximize your uh, efficacy against certain opponents. So absolutely, let me update you to 24. And because your dex is higher, I'm guessing that you will be before the Shadow Blade Elite. Yep. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Uh, actually, what is your dex? What is your dex, actually? Uh, it's 20. You are not first. The Shadow Blade is 21 what? on the dex. Uh, one question. Uh, Sorry, mate. Um, you, when you begin, this is a free action. You can spend one key point to yeah. um, force one creature to have its initial change to match yours, or to, um, okay, well. to make yours to match theirs. It doesn't say enemy; it says creature. Could he just make his twenty-nine like Harry? You could, yeah, he could join Harry. It's just a creature. <laughs> that, that, that seems a bit more. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, a creature. It's not necessarily an enemy. It's not necessarily an enemy. Shadow blade, and it would be like sympathizing with his friends for all the shit that he just went through. Did you? Would you like to align your key to Harry? Sure. If that's yeah. if that's what we're gonna say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, cre it's creature. I specifically used the word creature because we okay. originally had it as enemy. I don't know if you remember, but we did originally have it as enemy, and then we yeah, changed we it to yeah, um, yeah, because yeah. because spells. it was much more balanced to have that ability to, to swap yeah, to allies as well. Just do whatever. Yep. I'm right, that. That's great. Uh, Harry, what's your dex? That's right. Niles, uh, so you align Niles, your key to Harry and just fucking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Wait, three? Yeah, plus, three. Plus, three. Three. plus three. Plus three. Plus three. I'm plus four charisma because uh, Warlock. Oh, okay. I got, I got you. I got you. I, got you. I yeah, just yeah, yeah. the, the Leofine senses and some other good perks to boost up my initiative. Bump your, bump your initiative. Uh, Niles, in that case, you are first. As you take this moment, knowing that combat is about to begin, hearing the drow, uh, the, the drow, the kite and armor call out, the drow elite. We'll have to dispose of your bodies first. Um, you immediately spring into action, focusing your key, relieved to see your friend Harry once again. And as you concentrate, all of you watch. Actually, yeah, I, I was going to say, like, do we want to kind of describe what your key alignment looks like? I kind of imagined, like, you sort of pause for a second and meditate. And as you do so, you kind of see this, like, almost like key points, these these line lines of light joining up your chakra points. Yeah. And matching up with those on Harry in this I mean, brief I, moment. The way I see this is as yeah. this conversation has been going, I've been obviously staring at this pool of water, but as the conversation has been coming to a natural conclusion, uh, you'll note that uh, Niles kind of just like shifts his attention to the conversation really quickly and sees this, this instance about to happen. And I sort of align myself to the readiness of whatever's about to take place. And I kind of focus in on Harry in this instance, realizing that he's probably going to be the first to react. And yeah, I just, I guess, just take in this this moment of, uh, I guess, I have this like this this instant clarity as this energy chakra begins to emanate from my body, um, and yeah, I just spring into action almost instinctively to uh, to come to Harry's aid uh, to protect him from whatever it might be that's about to befall him. Um, so that is exactly what uh, Niles is going to do. He's going to use a bonus action to use Step of the Wind. Um, and basically just close that distance and go straight towards the elite. Like really just glide through um, and just get, really just get up in her grill. Um, uh, so that's exactly what he's gonna do. So Fantastic. he's gonna fly from this corner here, just straight up, getting up, get inside her grill. That's a bonus action. Um, yeah, and then... Papa uh, Papa. Pa -pa 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 exactly right. Pa -pa 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 -pa. That's the Niles. Uh, how, how do you do it? You do it so well. That's yeah. it. That's it. Cool. It's the energy we're here to enjoy. Let's go. Uh, chat chat said she uh, deserves a swift kick. I think she's about to get more than that. That's a natural one. Oh, yes. Niles. Um, as, well, you, well. as you fly down out of the darkness in a sudden rush of wings and wind you kind of misjudge the distance to her in the darkness just a little bit and as she steps back your first punch which you kind of incorporated into this sudden rush as you fly across causes you to spin and tumble um oh, as she man. steps nimbly to the side as you almost a like crash into the rock and roll down the side coming to a bit of a tumble prone That's at the bottom of this little prone can I do a sweeping kick, uh, like with my second attack? Uh, like kind of like a like a like you know how like the drunken master might like do like a an acrobatic acrobatic like kick out maybe. Yeah, I'm I'm happy to have that. I think when you're prone, do you have disadvantage on attacks? Let me have a no, quick check. Or so. no, I could be wrong I'm, about that. No? I don't know why I've got that in my mind. No, you're all good. Right. Go uh, I just spin. I just spin around on my back and I do a kick from the prone position. I tried to make it look cool, despite the fact that I fucked up massively. Um, <laughs> I do. I do quite enjoy that though. 16. Uh, the 16's a little bit better, but unfortunately not enough. As you go to as you go to strike her, Niles, you watch as she almost like nimbly steps through the shadows, just dodging out of the way. Uh, it's like trying to hit smoke. Yeah, I'm impressed. She still There's hasn't that. drawn a weapon at this point. Great. It was a, the moments look all cool, but uh, <laughs> Niles is not feeling great. Uh, yeah. So I still love you, Hoot Hoot. Hoot Hoot. <laughs> hoot Sad hoot, hoot noises. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that's fine. I, I guess I don't have any. What does, does Set the Wind allow me? How much movement speed do I have with Set the Wind? I believe it doubles your movement speed, does it not? Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
Well, in that case, I do have enough movement to get back up from prone, so I will do that. Brilliant. Harry, you are up next. How, how tall is this rock again that they're on? Uh, oh, this one here is only about 30 feet tall. The rest of the canyon walls are sort of like 30. 60, 70, up to 80 at certain points. Okay, so to get up there, is a, it's a fair, you'll, you'll probably make me climb. I, well, I mean, um, unle- unless you can describe to me how you scale a 30 uh, foot high thing without climbing, uh, then I mean, probably. I mean, you hop 15 feet. It's pretty good. <laughs> can you can you do the Mario double jump? If you can, yeah. if you can Mario double jump, you're sweet. Good tech, good tech. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. Okay. Well, Bart is going to like be trust falling on both Thrain and Harry going back to back. So if you're not there, <laughs> Harry doesn't know this. Harry doesn't know. <laughs> Harry's true. acting on instinct. Harry wants to support Niles because he knows how dangerous this elite is and that she is the boss. Yeah. And that she also uses poison weapons. Oh, guys, she uses poison arrows as well. I don't know if I saw will have poison as well. Um, oh, no. Uh, that would have been good to know! <laughs> it really hurts. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> My energy is only heal. So Harry will... Um, wants to back up Niles, so he will go 15 feet to this grid. Yep. Uh, take a swing with his yeah. attack. Um, with a um, booming blade. Ooh, very nice. Here he, here he, Harry focuses on his arm and he's, 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 he's sick of being a prey animal, so he attacks, and that's the damage. That's off the roll. Okay, I'm just doing attack roll. That's okay. Still not used to this. <laughs> it's only been almost a year. Oh, that's <laughs> to hit. 12, 12 does not hit the Grick. Oh, Sorry, okay. buddy. Great. These things are pretty armored. As you um, concentrate the thunderous energy through your sword, like so pleased to be reunited, you push forwards and you watch as the Grick just moves this serpent, like this worm-like body to the side and you miss the blade cutting through empty air. Great, 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 great. Um, well, at least he can't follow me because I got the, my ability, my trait. Um, so I've moved 15. Um, Harry will go to the base of the stone. He is going to make... Oh, no, it's right. You don't get an attack opportunity yep. because you've got fancy, your fancy footwork. Yep. Yep. Yeah, but he can still move because he's not being bladed. Exactly. Um, yeah, Harry will move to the base of the stone and prepare to climb up next turn. Brilliant. He's got a bonus action. Um, so here he might use his bonus action to Hexblade Curse. Ooh, oh. what does your Hexblade um, Curse look like, Harry? Um, so, I'm imagining like yeah, chains so, so of some sort. This is the first time anyone's seen a, a magic apart from Booming Blade, which is really just an explosion after he runs off, right? So yeah. it's just like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Couldn't have been a rabbit, he was over there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I think Harry like points out his 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 stone, his he has fit. Um, you can was, call it a heart stone, we can call it a heart stone. We don't need to, cut this, to uh, keep calling it... Um, I, I, what do you Gut call stuff. it? Was it original? Gut stuff. Gut st- it reminds Gut me of stuff. Goofy. You know, you know, Goofy's like, Yuh! you know, like yelling like that. Well, we're like, definitely going to call it Heartstone in that case. Uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> call um, Heartstone. Yeah. yeah, he points his Heartstone up at at her, and she's like, he's like, we we could have done this peacefully, and um, yeah, I think out from his stone, you people, everyone around, sees the tentacles, flesh chains. Oh that he that harry saw in, in the other in the other dimension um and it's it's really disconcerting because it's like it's like they're moving almost like the Greeks do you know and um yeah you see him fly out from his arm and into her and the shadow kind of like starts off dark and then lessens and everything looks normal after that Brilliant. The only thing I'll add to that is the as the tentacles move, there's almost a partial kind of transparency to them as they fly out of the heartstone. And they glitch a little bit. Sections of them pixelize momentarily as they reach for uh, reach for the drow in the chitin armor. 
reach for the shadow blade elite. And then as they wrap around her, there's this glitching around her, and then they're gone. Very nice. Uh, What's it sound like, Dylan? What's it sound like? What does what, what sound like? What does a glitch sound like? <laughs> what does it all sound like? There's no sound at all. It's completely it's silent. silent. I love it. Freaky. That's, that makes it weirder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, now, Hexblade's Curse. I believe uh, you pick an ability which she... I'm trying to remember really. No, this uh, is... Um, oh, that, no, I'm getting, I'm getting, no, I'm getting Hex, Hex and Hexblade's Curse. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna forever get them mixed up. I think I'm just, I'm forever uh, cursed. Is, he adds flat necrotic damage. That's right to all the nineteen, attacks. and he gets yeah. hit point back if they die. Yeah, that's it. Brilliant. Anything else in your turn, Harry? Um, happy little bunny. That's it. Harry's, Harry's stretching out his uh, calf so he can jump up next, next to. Fantastic. The Shadow Blade Elite. Niles, you're gonna be very pleased to use the rest of your movement to stand up. As yep. she looks at you, you watch as she sort of like cocks her head a little bit and looks down at you. You can see this proud, noble woman dressed in this elaborate kite and armor. And the cloak that's wrapped around her looks very similar to the cloak Ember was wearing that he got off Zaylin. And as she cocks her head and looks down at you, Niles, ah, it's good they've gone so different. Oh, well. And with that, she reaches up, draws the Kopesh, and then in a single fluid movement, strikes down across you. Uh, Niles does a... Uh, that's going to be a 22 to hit. Ooh, that will hit, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll do the other um, the other attacks, because she uh, makes two attacks. Oh, cool. Uh, cool. 19. Yeah, that also hits. Alrighty, uh, let's roll some damage. Roll well right now, Niles. These are important. That's all good. It's all good. Oh, holy shit. I have it's rolled good. really, really well. Um, that's going to be 28 necrotic from the first attack. And 24 from the second. Are you still up? Uh, how much is that total? <laughs> Let me do the math really quickly. 28 plus 24, uh, 52. Uh, do I still have the temp HP from You would still session? have the temp HP. Holy shit. Okay, I am still up, but I, that, yeah, I'm not in a good way. Um, <laughs> without the well. temp, I would be on two HP right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she look, just strikes. <laughs> Harry, you said that was poison. Where's the poison? That's not poison. <laughs> from her blade. Because Harry, you weren't hit with the uh, the Kopesh, you were hit with uh, a poisoned oh, arrow. Oh. <laughs> yeah. As she draws this shadowed Kopesh, you watch as Niles, as this thing spins towards you and strikes. It's almost faster than the eye can see. What you can see is the shadows trailing behind it. And as it strikes through into your body, the blade doesn't cut. It passes through you as if you weren't there. And for a moment, you think she's missed. And then you feel this intense pain rack through your body and as you look down you watch as the two cuts that she made across you there's no there's no physical damage and then all of a sudden the feathers and the skin begin to die and rot from where the blade passed through you these two lines oh. cut across your body that's really that's great that's just it's anime cutting you beautiful Love that's that. just she sheaths <laughs> she sheaths the compassion and suddenly like the rock springs <laughs> forth as the necrotic damage takes into effect uh, no she she keeps the sword out and as she looks up at the sword, so sort of turns it this way and that, and then looks back at you, Nas, and you can see the sword starting to grow darker as your life force is drained away. And as she looks you in the eyes, you chose this pathway. Now you face the justice anything. of, now you face the justice of the Loth Swan Drow. It is swift, it is merciless, and you will you're rot. Telling, you're telling me <laughs> uh, she's not going to move. She is very confident. Um, Lyra is next. Uh, Lyra is going to see you in trouble, Niles. I'm just quickly seeing if Lyra's got anything she can do to teleport you out of there. Um, uh, Moonbeam could be do. kind of fun. Oh, shit. Wow. Um... I, th I think Lyra would healing word you in this instance, give, give you some health back, and then she would try and send... Yeah, I think I think she'd healing word and maybe try and do... 
Maybe try. Oh no, she can't use a symbiotic entity. Oh no, you guys have had a short rest. You guys have a short rest. She got a symbiotic entity back. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I was just making sure she had that. Uh, yeah, okay. Am I? Uh, are you? Am I able to give a um, idea that could save sure. Lyra? I, I think I know exactly what Lyra's going to do, though. Lyra's going to. Because she, she do, can't use the face step twice. Um, which was my first thought. I was like, oh, maybe she could try and face step. Because one of the Eladrin seasons lets you teleport someone else, but she's got Autumn, which is um, the step that lets her. Uh, wait, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, the Autumn face step. I'm trying to find the Autumn one. Um, which could she? Um, I'm not sure if she's ever done this before. Uh, conjure animals and create two CR1 giant eagles and one of them can pick him up and fly away? She doesn't have it as a spell. Oh. Conjure animals. She doesn't have it. Um, okay. It's all good. No, all she's right. got um, fairy fire floating disc, healing word, ice knife, thunder wave, <laughs> blindness, deafness, flaming sphere, gentle repose. When you die, Niles, she can make sure your corpse doesn't... Oh, that's so yeah. nice. That's Heat so metal, nice moonbeam. No, um, she could animate dead once you're dead too, though. No, she. Oh, hang on. Sorry, conjure animals. Sorry, I missed it. You're right. It's right down the bottom. Apologies. It was right with all the second levels. Yeah. Look, I think she probably would try and do something to get you out of there. Because one of those can at least try to like Frodo and Samwise Gamgee them out. Yeah, giant eagle. All right. Fuck. Don't give me more things to have to manage on this uh, on this map. <laughs> oh well. Um... I was planning on doing just that, but anyway, that's fine. That's okay. Let me chuck. Let me chuck down an eagle really quickly. I've got a um, got an eagle right here. Um, and the range one. of the spell is sixty feet, so they could. So you can drop it like... right on top of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get him out of there, hot quick. Hot quick. This is good. Okay. It's not a token eagle. I wanna. I, I prefer using tokens whenever I can. They're actual tokens. Let me have a quick peek. While I'm doing that, she will. She will cast this. As she, she essentially like holds up her hands. You watch as Lyra begins to summon the energy around her. She's going to use her bonus action to um, give herself the symbiotic entity. She would definitely do that. And then she's going to cast Conjure Animals um, as her last third level spell slot. Uh, she will summon a. Where are we? Do do. do. So if it's, she can summon, yeah, so she'll summon two giant eagles, essentially, one of them to try and harry the uh, the drow matron, or the drow, the drow shadow blade elite, and then one to try and rescue Niles. Um, okay. Niles, as the two eagles emerge, 60 feet from you. Let's give it two seconds. Oh, Take your time. There we go, 60 feet. Oh, basically right in front of you. Yeah, literally, she can summon them basically on top of you. <laughs> Fantastic. As she Girl. summons these two large um, eagles that appear right in the space in front of you. As they fly over, one of them is going to try and pick you up. Let me just pull over the giant eagle stat block. So lift. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's how, how much how much movement do they have? Uh, they've got 80 feet flying, so it can get you right out of there. Oh, cool. Uh, and it's got a strength of 16 plus 3. Yeah, so it'll use its uh, it'll use its uh, claws to try and pick you up. As one of the eagles flies down and tries to grab you, the other one's going to harry her. I'll do the attacks while I'm getting everything else in. It's going to do a beak attack and a talon attack against her. Nice. Uh, that is going to be a... Wow, I'm rolling well tonight. That's going to be a 20 to hit on the beak and a 17 to hit on the talons. Both of those are actually going to hit and it's going to deal some oh. damage to her straight wow. away. Wow, eagles! Uh, Go, eight Eagles. and ten. Wow, I'm rolling really well. <laughs> it's 18 damage as it strikes into her and begins to uh, to slash away at her kite and armor, drawing blood. Um, the Eagles fly down. One of them picking you up. Uh, do you? I'm guessing you don't resist this, uh, Niles. Uh, no, I'll let it happen. Perfect. See, I'm going to use. I see the situation um, and I'm like, yep, no, I want out of here. It's fine. Because I don't have an eagle token, I'm going to use the fear of tokens for the eagles, if that's okay, just because that's the closest I've got. Oh, that's fine. Um, so one of them's my gonna... version, but it's all good. That's okay. One of them's going to harry her. The other one's going to pick you up and fly away with you. She's going to make an attack of opportunity against the eagle, though. Um, that is going to be a... a 28 to hit. Holy shit. Uh, sorry, no. 25 to hit. 28 damage. Uh, the giant Ooh. eagle... Uh, is instantly killed. <laughs> <laughs> Niles, 
as you are picked uh, up by the eagle and it goes to fly off, it gets five feet away from her and then she just <laughs> cuts it in half. Again, there's this moment as the eagle flies over, it gets like five feet away and then just <laughs> drops, dropping you five feet down onto the rock, but still with the eagle interposed between you and her. So it does get you just far enough away that you're no longer in melee range. Um, oh, amazing. That's really great. Thank you, giant eagle. Is, is that the, is a clip that he like roll down to safety though? Or the problem is right, it's not a smooth surface. So the question is, if he's falling, he's now falling with fall damage. <laughs> it's 30 feet. Uh, I, I, don't he he I don't think oh, he wants that. I don't think he wants that. No, I, I have slow fall anyway, so that's fine. Oh, in that case then, you are dropped down and deposited at the edge of the cliff. Um, okay. <laughs> That's something. Hey, something. Lyra then casts Symbiote against you and calls out, Holy shit! And that's uh, and then she's going to use her movement to move up a little bit further. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. She's going to move up along the edge of the uh, the embankment here, trying to get a bit of a bead on the Shadow Blade uh, Elite. Thrain, it is your go. Uh, can I just ask DM, yeah. the gracious DM, before Hello. Thrain? I, I realized at the start of Lyra's turn that um, I get advantage on a one on one with the Greek, which I misrolled. Um, can I have that, or is that too late? Oh, yeah. Do you get advantage from one of your yep. class features? Because it's just so you versus it. Buckle, I get uh, one-on-one um, advantage. Or Brilliant. Attack. Happy to let you roll that again. And that'll give me time to for Lyra to also shout out to Tim. Tim, punch a Grick. Does it just give you sneak attack damage? Was it, I thought it was advantage, was it? I thought, oh, no, maybe you're right. No, no, yeah, no, no you're right. I, you're right. I don't get I don't, hit I, anyway. You take damage without advantage. It's right. 13 yeah, doesn't right. hit anyway. Um, Tim will move up and try and take on one of these Gricks with his uh, his move. Uh, Tim, alrighty. you're one Because <laughs> Lyra's going to call out like, Tim, keep the Grick busy. Because okay, okay, otherwise yeah. <laughs> you guys are going to be flanked very quickly. Um, God is alrighty. definitely freaking out. His idea was to like full scrum this and everyone's splitting off. <laughs> Thrain, it is your go. All right. So I'm going to let out a big bellowing laugh as I expand to twice my size as I rage then I'm going to rush forward <laughs> everyone's abandoning this plan that you didn't <laughs> that you didn't share <laughs> I'm going to start trying I'm going to come over here and try and, I'm going to try and start taking all this these um grick like attention so I'm Brilliant. just laughing and I'm going to start hacking into this grick here fantastic all right, so I'm going to go reckless and just attack with advantage. Uh, Twenty six to hit. Yeah, that definitely hits. The Grick, so, the Grick are tough, but not that tough. No, any that tough. Yep. So twelve slashing, and then another two added on top, so fourteen damage all up. Yep. And then uh, thirteen for the next one. Oh no, sorry. It's sorry. You, uh, sorry, uh, you've got to do your second attack hit. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to do the next one. 25 to hit. Uh, Definitely 10 slashing hits. damage. Brilliant. 10. Uh, Rain, how do you want to do this? <laughs> so I just rush ahead almost like just a tornado of steel as I rush ahead, just laughing. This massive like smile crosses his face. As he, 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 you know, he... he he waited out the the negotiations. He let his party do the talking. He was the whole time impatient, sort of waiting for a fight. The moment the fight starts, yeah, he just rushes forward. Immediately, just like this tornado of steel, like envelops this Grick, just making him into just sashimi. <laughs> just yeah. cutting it in half as you then begin slicing all these pieces, dicing it in a way. Yeah, and then so using then, the last of your movement to shuffle on over to the next one. Yep, absolutely. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna take that one, that that one's attention. Actually, I might even go here, trying to get this one's attention as well. I'm just pretty boisterous. So I'm hoping that the attention of me laughing and moving around, and just killing one of its own, will bring the other one to me and keep it off some of the other people. So we'll see Brilliant. what happens. But otherwise, mm. nice. Ember. That's the end of my turn. It is your go next, Ember. Okay, Time to send Flicker yeah. in to teleport Niles to safety. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't get that kind of distance at this point in time. He, I can only do it 30 feet from where I am. Oh, so, shit. Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm too far away. How far can you move? I can move 30 feet, but I'm on a, a, a 
an edge, which is, did you say it was 30 feet high? So I'd essentially yeah. be able to climb down but not go any further. Yeah. 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 So, so you're 40 what? feet. So if you got to there, you'd be, uh, I'd still be that? Sure. 50, 50 feet away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, bugger. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I didn't notice where um, Bart was in the initiative. I think he's after the, the Grix. Is that? Oh, yeah. Right? I think I, I was forgot to be added in. I'm, I'm, I was a six. So I'm oh, okay. So you were last. Then, yeah. Okay. So what I'll do is I am going to summon Flicker and I'm going to get him. Oops, I should say again. Summon him there. So, you know, out of the reach of the Gleek bit enough. So hopefully the fire damage can hit him. So if Absolutely. he can make his uh, DC saving throw. Dexterity. They're not very good at dexterity. I'd be very pleased to know. That's a 10. Fantastic. So not very good. <laughs> He will Not take, their specialty. Uh, seven plus, I believe that's also my spell. No, nope, just uh, 2d6. So take seven fire damage. Seven fire and, damage. Nice. And what I would like to do, I'd get Flicker to move 5, 10, 15. And Bart, Bart's a, you know, medium to large creature. Is that right? Medium that creature, yep. Medium creature. Okay, cool. What I would like to do is um but has seen flicker a few times now so i think mm. they'd be friendly enough what i would what my thought is or what amber would be wanting flicker to do is to sit on um bart's shoulder and then for him to point because he obviously can't talk and i'm going to get him to hold his fire teleportation as a um, action for next time he's attacked um or sorry Think. It's got to be something that triggers it. When Could he it is attacked, when I when I point. Well, my idea is I want him to do his fire teleportation to get Niles or whoever that surrounds the main guy out. Okay. That, you can shout this they, out, like you can call out, like Bart get to Niles. You can do that, and then you'll think of me when okay. Bart gets to Niles. I will use fire teleportation to get Niles out. You can definitely do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That that's probably what I'd do. Or, you know, whoever wants to come with him, obviously, because it's whoever wants to come. But <laughs> that's probably what I'd be yelling out. <laughs> Brilliant. And then, yeah, so held action. When when someone is in range of Flicker who... So let's say when, when someone is in, Flick, in range of Flicker and needs extraction, you'll fire teleport them out. So when you, when you get within range yep. of Niles, Flicker will teleport Niles and whoever else is there and willing mm -hmm. out. Easy. That's a very, very easy held action. Anything yep. else on your turn, Ember? Um, I probably I've still got my movement, so I'd probably move down near where Lyra is, just get my, you know, 30, uh, 30 feet there and yep. um, hang out a bit close to the edge there. Brilliant. Nice. The Grick. Uh, well, the Grick that's attacking Thrain is super easy. Thrain, the Grick attacks you. Uh, this is going to be... Uh, does a 9 hit you? I'm guessing not. 22? You're, you're me, by the way. Rain? Talking, rain? Oh, me? No. Rain? No, no, it's rain, rain, rain. He might have slipped away for a moment. Yeah. He's, not, he's not unmuting. Uh, That's 22 okay. definitely sounds like it would hit. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll put 6 damage on his token and we'll uh, we'll apply that when it comes back. Uh, that is with the beak. Uh, the oh, next... was that rounded down? Uh, oh no, sorry, you're right. I'll halve that and round it down. So it's actually three. Uh, the next Grick is going to move up 5, 10, 15 towards you, Bartholomew. And he's going you. to Saves make me the attack with to with tentacles <laughs> and a bite. Uh, alrighty. Does a eight hit you? Uh, no. What about a natural it 20 for 24? Natural 20 definitely will, yes. So the good news is the 8 is on the beak attack, so you're not going to take any damage from that. The tentacles is going to be... Um, so it's 10 rolls uh, plus... So it's 2d6. So that's going to be 22 points of piercing damage. Question. Hello. Uh, gracious DM. Um, <laughs> as I can see this coming for some sort of a vital spot... Um, can I consume my reaction now to uh, freak out and point um, for uh, what is it? Not Ember. Um, for Flicker to take me over to the others now. Sure, you still take the damage, but 
Oh, oh. Because <laughs> it's because it's in response to the damage, right? It's like you being like, because you can't, you're not going to know if it's going to be a bad hit until it kind of hits, because you assume your armor is going to take it, or like well, you can't. You, you can't. A natural twenty souls, assuming like like a crit, it's coming for some sort of a vital organ. But the question is, how quickly can you react to something like that? And then Ember also, or Flicker, then also has to react. You've got two creatures that have to be able to respond quickly enough, or only the Grick just has to keep I moving guess. forward. My reaction would make sense, but then um, yeah. Flicker would probably be too behind. Because I was like, the, the shield spell, but where there's two things acting. Okay, you It's, it's, it's two sense. reactions kind of happening back to back, unfortunately. Mm. So you can do it, definitely. Mm. But just keep in mind, you will still take the damage. Nah, that's fine. Yeah, I still wanted to attack this thing, but I, I was hoping that might be a little way to circumvent the damage. Um, it's how a good much call. was it? Uh, 22 points of damage, sorry. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, sorry. Because it's the better criticals. The uh, criticals hurt. Uh, that's was its it, full go. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, oh, sorry. Did it, sorry, I was, I was sorry, that part saying, did it take, make two attacks against Bart? Or missed, just one? They make two attacks. It missed the first attack, got a crit on the Would, second. Would it have just attacked Bart, or would it have attacked Flicker as well with one of those? No, it's just yeah. attacking Bart. Bart's the Flicker's up on his shoulder. This thing's a worm on the ground. It's just attacking oh, okay. the big bird in front of it, not the fiery thing. Um, and not to help yeah. the enemies, but has the one near Tim gone? I'm just about to do him next. Oh, okay, <laughs> Told you. Okay. Um, <laughs> the one that's attacking Tim is also going to make two attacks. Let's see what we get. Come on, Tim. You're agile. Let's get yeah, Tim's on, stats Tim. open too. Tim's a spore servant. His his agility doesn't have much to do with it, actually, unfortunately. Um, he's a surprise, my man. He's he's not as spry as you think. Um, uh, neither's my man. <laughs> uh, thing is, though, it doesn't matter how spry you are. When I roll a natural one for the first attack and a nine for the second, that doesn't hit Tim. Um, I'm just pulling open his uh, his stats, but it doesn't hit him. Uh, it's the Durgar Spore Seven stats. No, that doesn't hit him. As this thing t tries to strike, you watch as Tim just goes, <laughs> and leans left and right, dodging out of the way. Uh, that is the end of the Grix go. Now, it would be uh, Bartholomew's go. Oh, no. But? But unfortunately, there's uh, other creatures mm -hmm. hiding. Um, emerging is. from the shadows, uh, you watch as two creatures suddenly appear on the sides of the canyon, the box canyon. Two drow friends. assassins. Oh, Hello, Chris. friends. You didn't think it was just her, did you? No, I knew, I knew there were others. But, um, <laughs> I was and as the two drow emerge from the sides, one of them makes a rush. I sent one of them to the map layer. That's awkward. Uh, one of them makes a rush uh, towards Lyra and Ember. The other one... Um, takes a pot shot at uh, Harry from on top of the uh, on top of the canyon walls 5, 10, 20, 25, 30 um, he's going to use his full movement to rush up in between Lyra and Ember as this shadow blade emerges from the gloom and, and starts rushing towards you um, Ember there's really almost no warning at this this drow just emerges from the darkness um, as he does so you watch as he pulls out a small blade and makes a little offhand attack towards you uh, that is going to be... Uh, 11 doesn't hit. Nah, carry on. <laughs> That's his, um, and yeah, 10. Nah, not hit him. Ember laughs in his face. Okay, we got, a, we got a little bit of balancing out here. Come on. There is a little bit of balancing. Uh, the one on top, uh, Harry, does a... This oh. is a hand crossbow, and this is your favorite, Harry. This is the drow poison. Uh, does a... 24 hits you. Oh, I can't even shield that. Yeah, that hits me. Sorry, mate. Uh, that is going to be five points of damage. Okay, That's, okay. And I, I really need you to make me a constitution saving throw, please. I believe in you. 20. Hey, oh, yes. Let's go. Oh, yes. You are immune to the poisoning for the next hour in addition as this arrow yes. cuts across you <laughs> harry there's you've been exposed to this poison before your little bunny metabolism has already faced this and come through the other side but more importantly with your blade in your hand your patch renewed with your patron you feel this empowerment within you and you just like look down at this tiny scratch from this arrow like pull up the blood on the finger lock eyes with the drow taste it and smile as you look at him and then carry on <laughs> just unaffected by the poison 
Uh, that's his full go. Um, now it would be Bartholomew. What's what's your what's your dex, Bart? What's your dex? Oh, my dex. Oh, yeah. zero. I it would be Bartholomew's go, but unfortunately, there's another hidden thing that gets triggered <laughs> before that happens. Wait, All what? Right. Another? Hmm. Well, there's two different. There's you know, there's multiple drow here. <laughs> you know, oh, there's okay, lots okay, of okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I and, thought you meant another another thing. Oh no no no! Um, emerging from the darkness, another drow that was hiding, a drow mage, stands up from the rocky face and begins casting a very dangerous looking spell. Um, they are going to cast, oh, you guys are all nicely arranged on that rock. Uh, it's going to cast web on Niles. Oh. Will, will it pick up the uh, elite as well though? Yeah, it's not too worried about that though. Just oh, check the, the cloak. 20 foot there cube. Also, there's also yeah. the verticality to this. like the Exactly. Pyramid. Nah, it's not going to go for that because the verticality makes it too tricky. Niles at the bottom, Harry's at the top. The eagle can fly. It's nah, it's, it's useless. It's actually going to go for Webb on Thrain and Bartholomew. Both of you are just in range of that 20-foot cube. Go um, on. It Go. has. As you, as you watch, you see this drow begin weaving their hands around, conjuring this sort of like white globule of what looks like this slightly glowing liquid. And as it releases and throws it forwards, you see this almost like spinnaker of web form in the air and as it lands on the ground i will place here put a aura around it so we know where everyone is uh, let's do a green aura to offset your there we go as it lets loose this aura of web to capture both Thrain, bartholomew and the two greeks that they're fighting in this web of uh does that do anything immediately or when we start moving? Uh, it won't do anything just yet. When you guys start moving, it'll, it'll do yeah, stuff. Okay, when, you, when you start your turn or, or end up during your turn, that's when things happen. Um, that is the Drown Mage's go. Uh, the Drown Mage will actually use its uh, bonus action to vanish and disappear. Uh, Bartholomew, it is your turn. Um, just quickly, did we see where the mage was at least before it disappeared? Uh, up oh, on yeah, the down. rock down over towards the uh, southwestern uh, corner. Okay, so sort of in that area. Yeah. Uh, Bartholomew, it is your go. Uh, as you are stuck inside the web, um, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw, please. Uh, six. Unfortunately, you are restrained. Um, your speed is zero. Uh, your attack rolls have disadvantage. Attack rolls Nine. against you have advantage fine with that uh, because the plan's going to be the plan um, this is going to hurt Thrain a little bit uh, but Thrain's favourite I'm, I'm going to so I did want to follow um, before the Shadow Blades had appeared Ember's instruction of helping Niles who now is kind of safe Harry in this mortal combat, but um, I know how important the back line is, so I would like to try to get to them if possible. But dealing some damage on the way, how far can Flicker take me? 15 feet. 15 feet. 5, 10, 15. Um, yeah, look, we're going to do that. I'm going to point for Flicker to take me here. Alrighty. As you point backwards with a sudden flare of fire, you watch as Flicker's wildfire magic goes off, teleporting you and Flicker out of the web. Now that, if I remember correctly, creates like a burst of flames when they leave, correct? Both it does. Hurting the Grick and igniting the web? Exactly right. So yeah, the Grick needs to make... Deck. Yeah, Grick will make a deck save. Um, it's going to fail because Gricks are not very dexterous. Uh, never mind, that's an 18. That is pretty dexterous. Oh, wow. uh, half damage in that case then, uh, Sai, or just uh, no damage? I think, it's uh, I think no damage. No uh, damage. Uh, yeah, just must exceed saving throw or take 1d6 plus 5 damage. So yeah, um, should be none. So any 5-foot cube of web exposed to fire burns away in one round. So in this first round, it's going to just be this central cube here, but that flame is going to grow and spread. I will keep track of that as it begins to burn outwards away from this point. Okay. I am then going to... Um... <laughs> Actually, if it's a 5-foot cube, let me just double check. 
might get the Grick in this first one. Let me just double check. Because it's from all points within it. Yeah, 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 sorry. The Grick is also going to take fire damage as the web burns away. That is going to be 2d4 fire damage. Do you want to roll that for me, uh, Sai? I think that's appropriate for Ember to roll it. Yeah, 2d4. Uh, that's five. Five points of damage to the Grick. Brilliant. Wonderful. Alrighty, anything else in your turn, Bartholomew? That is your... So actually, you've not done anything yet. You've just pointed. I've just pointed. <laughs> Super easy. Um, yeah. yeah, so I'm going to move 5, 10, 15 flickers on my shoulder. So Flicker will yeah. move with me, is that correct? Yep. That's right. Okay, so that's all movement used. Um, I'm going to try to coordinate us um, a, li a little bit. Is that just 15 of your feet of movement? Did you only get 15? Because it's Oh no, you're right, I do have another... Yeah, 15. 5, 10, 15. So I'll get to the cliff face itself. Um, yeah, trying to organize us a little bit um, as I'm running. Uh, I, Threen, I'm going to go and help Ember and Lyra. Uh, Lyra, can you go and handle that, that mage that's in hiding? I'm hoping that... Uh, hoping Thrain <laughs> hears that. Hoping Thrain hears that. Um, and then I'm going to call out as I'm running underneath Lyra. Uh, Lyra, call at Tim to go and help the others on the rock with the main one. Um, okay. I am going to use my action to... The Shadow Blades look like he's pretty tough to actually hit. Uh, I was going to try to shoot with those lovely hand crossbows that I had because I finally have some ranged weapons. Um, but I think I'm probably just going to do that as I'm running away from uh, this Grick. So as I was within like 30 feet of him, I'm not sure if I am now, but as I was running, I'm just going to um, pull and with both of my actions, bang, bang, um, with both of the hand crossbows and bonus action, two weapon fighting. I'm just going to, oh, actually, no, it's a loading weapon. I won't be able to fire a third time. Yeah, no, I'm just going to fire two times. That's fine. Try to Brilliant. get some damage. Try to hurt this thing a bit. So the first miss. Damn. Which Second. one are you targeting? Sorry. The... Uh, the Grick that was, is right burning. in front of you. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. 17 definitely hits. Uh, 17. Lovely. Now, the Webbers, they make, you make a saving throw to be restrained on the start of your turn, not when it's cast, correct? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Ah, shit. I was hoping that it might be, and then I can get it, man. Um, uh, good roll, though, because I don't have any modifiers with decks. Uh, five piercing damage with one five shot. Five piercing on. damage. As the arrow cracks through the Grick's outer chitinous armor, you know you've hit something vital. You hear this immediate screech as the creature writhes and twists on the ground, this purple Icarus blood falling free. Uh, you can suspect the burns across its body might have even helped break through the chitin with your arrow following those, uh, those burn sections. Okay, perfect. And then that's going to be it. He's going to be ready, getting ready to climb up to try to help the two backliners. Um, uh, and I, with the final bit, I'll just shout out to Ember. Um, send Flicker to help the others if you really want to. I'm coming. Brilliant. Uh, top of the round is actually Niles. Yeah, wow. What a, what a huge round. Yeah, man. Niles is still reaching down at this gash through his chest. Um, wondering how it all went wrong in, in, a, in a way. Um, <laughs> he kind of looks up at the shadow blade. Well, it's the, the glass cannon effect, right? Like you rushed in to do some stunning strikes, yeah. didn't hit, and then... Fucked up. <laughs> it is what it is, right? It's just the way, but it's just sometimes the dice roll well, sometimes they don't. I, I guess Niles just looks up kind of, I guess, disappointed in a way. I, I think in his mind, he was probably thinking they might have been a way to end this peacefully. And being a monk, like, he's not really, he doesn't really like fighting for the sake of fighting. Um, he just sighs again. And just he just says, oh, you are right. This could have ended much differently. And unfortunately for you, it's over. Uh, he's going to reach into his bag of holding and pull out a yellow gem that he's been holding for many sessions. He's then going to, I guess, shatter it over next to the Shadow Blade Elite uh, and then just back up as uh, an Earth Elemental will spring forth from the Yellow Gem. Yep, yes. absolutely. Please. Yes. Let me put down the Earth Elemental. Um, where did this come from? Yeah, he's had uh, this the whole time. I've had this for ages. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm pretty sure this might have been one of the gifts we got from the Hill Giants that I've had in my in the bag of holding. Oh yeah, that's right. I was too busy focusing on giant carrots. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, oh, this one looks pretty sick. Uh, this is technically an Earth Myrmidon, this uh, token, but it's too cool oh, not to cool. use. It's too cool not to use. The, mer the uh, Myrmidons look so fucking cool. I love the Myrmidons. But the first oh, thing yeah, I 3D wait. printed oh, once okay. I got my 3D printer or calibrated was a Myrmidon of each type of elemental. Because it's so cool. I don't like it. That looks something like, like something else at very first. <laughs> As the gemstone shatters Niles, you watch as the pieces begin to spin and then dig into the earth before dragging sections of stone and rock up with them. And as they do, the earth elemental forms from the stones around itself, around this uh, this large outcropping, causing the Shadow Blade Elite to kind of stumble back a little bit as this enormous hulking form comprised of shattered stone, grown crystals growing out of its body, as well as like patches of mushroom, fungus that have still grown with the, uh, the earth. And as it looks down at the drow, you hear this. Cool. Um, uh, yeah. I will add it as a initiative. It will follow your commands um, after it has been cool. summoned. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, wherever it lies, um, Niall just, Niles just says, uh, enter. Oh shit! I like that a lot. Uh, you hear this, which you suspect is probably uh, the elemental speak. But as you do not speak it, you have no idea what it said. What language uh, is it, Owen? Actually, uh, it is uh, primordial. I actually speak primordial. You hear Thrain <laughs> in primordial. So you speak, it shall be done. Sick. Cool. For, ironically, Thrain has a little language. It's just purely yeah. by the backgrounds I chose. He has like four languages he knows. That's sick. Right, They're all relevant just... to the campaign. So far. Uh, Actually, Earth Elemental's gone into nine. Oh, yeah. Is it Primordial? Primordial. Hmm. I thought it was Terran. So, I, yeah, it's tricky. So elementals kind of speak a couple of different things. If you pull open the elemental, mm. um, the, uh, yeah, the elemental um, stat block, it says Terran is the language, but I've kind of condensed the Auron, Aquan, uh, yeah. Eden, and Terran under Primordial because it's, that's, otherwise that's it's like, it's such a dick move as a DM to be like, what, which, which elemental one do you speak? And how they're not speaking. Uh, that's fair. There's four. That's, you have to get all four. Sense. I'm like, I've nah, always, just put them um, on Primordial. Yeah, I've always done it as just like a different dialect of primordial. Exactly. Like slight differences here and there. Yeah, it's exactly how I do it. That makes complete sense. Yeah, I like that. It's, it's, it's how I've always run it, Christian, as well. Like it's otherwise, yep. it's just, it's a dick move being like, oh, you speak Aquan. Oh, they're speaking uh, fucking Terran. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, primordial language? Nah, fuck you. It's, yeah. it's, it's something more unique. <laughs> yeah. No, um, no, actually, I've... I speak uh, Aquan and... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, so yeah. so if any if anyone has taken Auron, Aquan, Terran, or I Ignean, I think it is, um, feel free to swap them out for Primordial. You now speak all the elemental languages. You're welcome. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, anything oh. else on your turn, Niles? You've still got move, um, uh, moving, just just flying out of there. <laughs> I just I just back up. Um, yep. Yeah, I think oh, as I mean, as like, you can like, fly. Yeah. You could fly over the web if you wanted to go on the diagonal. Okay. I'll do just that. so you know, remember, like you don't. You, obviously, the web takes up the ground. It's not sort of from here to the ceiling but i mean it's like 80 oh, okay, feet cool. up in the air so you could you yeah. could if you wanted to like fly over the top of the web and get yourself into a position on the diagonal but you're more than welcome to just want to make sure you're you... somewhere down here right the yeah was somewhere I'm, being, was. I'm being really nice as a dm that's fair <laughs> i wasn't to be honest i, I didn't know that well, i just i was like <laughs> yeah. yeah look that's fine i will diagonally move over to that position oh. i would assume that i would what did, what did he say dear diagonally oh i thought he did um, gee, uh, I mean, the necrotic damage is boring, but I, I'm kind of guessing that the, yeah, I don't know what to do. Um, I think, oh, nah, I'm so, it's all right. I'm going to not burn any more key points just yet. It's going to watch and see what happens. Okay. 
brilliant. Shadow Blade Elite. Uh, uh, Harry's turn. Oh, Just sorry, Harry's turn. Yes, sorry. It, it automatically yeah, right. um, keeps swapping yeah, on you. And, I'll, uh, I'll keep track. I'll keep track. I'll keep track. It's all good. There you go. Harry's um, turn. So, quick question. Uh, oh. I have a spell called Wrathful Smite. Is that you the do? same one as the Paladins? And does that mean I can use it after rolling and see what so I So it's roll? not a Divine do do? Smite. So, that's, no. so it's not Divine Smite, which is the Paladin feature. Wrathful Smite is a specific cantrip that lets you add more damage as part of your attack, basically. But it's not the same as a yes. Divine Smite. Because you can yeah, pass I... the bonus action correct, but that it doesn't activate until you land. Until it. you you're hit, gonna, you're concentrating on it, and then yeah. when you land the hit, yeah. If you which miss, I think is the same for thunderous smite as well. So you correct. still have your thunderous smite active on your blade because you haven't oh, hit no, he, with your blade yet, right? He cast booming blade. Blue, blue, booming sorry, blade booming blade, booming blade, not thunderous smite. Booming blade, yeah. Booming blade. I'm pretty sure yeah. booming blade's the same, right? On your next hit, I don't know that. Oh, well, uh, sorry, sure. it, it, I, have to, I have to use it when I do the action of uh, an attack anyway. So. I don't yeah. use Booming Blade. Yeah. Um, it's all, <laughs> I it's all Booming Blade so. <laughs> for chumps. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's all concentration, so it's not that. It's, it's, ah, okay, yeah, no, it's just, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. I will be getting rid of Wrathful Smite next time I get. Um, Did you think it was like Divine then, Smite where you could just power yeah, in spell slots into thought damage? That, like, yeah. I thought, sorry, I thought with, um I thought with Hex, Hexblade's Curse where I get a crit on a 19 and a 20. Oh, and, and then you could be, divine yeah, yeah. smite it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. look, you, you could still pick up a paladin level if you wanted. <laughs> get divine and, uh, smite. I want to multi-class that much. So do I get um, plus two, right? Because we're doing flank rules, not advanced. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Oh, uh, at higher uh, levels, actually, like... Harry. Oh, sorry, you go. Yeah? Just DM thought of what you could do to get that smite. Continue. That is a 16 because of the plus two from the flank. 16 so, against uh, the Shadow Blade. Oh, yeah, it's it. just not enough. It's just not enough. It's a 17 AC. Yeah. I'm so sorry, mate. It sucks. Um, 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 my Hex just does more damage. Okay, well, um, this isn't good. Um,. Use my action. Oh. Mm. Well, Harry is going to uh, jump down and try to like hide around the base of the rock. So, bonus section hide. Okay. As you as you scuttle down the edge of this quite large outcropping, could I get you to please make me an acrobatics check? Uh, I can try that. Yep, acrobatics. Oh, 16. 16 is brilliant. You scurry down the side nimbly with your uh, your very keen, keen, powerful hind legs, allowing you to, to scuttle down. Yep. Uh, knowing that this guy's here as well, I do want to try and hide. Um, maybe in the, in the brush around the edge of the outcrop. Yeah, yeah, and like camouflage with the webbing and everything, where, where it's like quite a lot of visual noise. Brilliant. Could I get you to please make me a stealth check? Me too. 22. Harry, you just vanish into the undergrowth, disappearing from view. Yep, just want to point out that that's still a 13 on the dice, and that wouldn't have hit. Oh, it might have, <laughs> it might have, it might have, it might have hit, but yeah, it's alright. That's my turn. Alrighty. Yeah, I'm not doing well. The Shadowblade Elite. Um, there's the Eagle and there's the Elemental. The Eagle's really not much of a target now the Elemental suddenly come on the scene. You watch as she <laughs> spins, seeing this enormous creature rising up in front of her, genuinely shocked not expecting this at all and you watch as she pulls the blade free and again makes those two wicked strikes across its body uh that is going to be it's an earth as well so this thing's ac should be really juicy right brutal yeah yeah uh ac for an earth elemental is 17 and it's got 126 right. hit points so this thing's this thing's a damage sponge uh oh my god okay so first attack is a 21 it is going to hit the second attack's a natural one though Ooh, uh, yeah, so we'll good. do the damage for the first, and then I'll I'll that deal with the full. Prone. Oh, the earth elemental pound on her. Uh, okay, so that's going to be. And I should check its damage resistances. Nah, this is a, this is a magical weapon. So, uh, and it's necrotic anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, cool, cool, cool. You watch as she slashes down once with the blade, and again, as it passes through the earth elemental, it seems to just pass through it as if it's not there at all. And then all of a sudden you watch as sections of the earth begin to go gray, this slate gray as the life is drained from its upper torso. The earth elemental lets out this trumpeting cry and as it swings its arm back, as she goes for the second strike, the arm just clips her 
causing her to stumble and trip and land land prone yeah, <laughs> in front of the creature. It's only fair. It's only fair. Um, she hasn't used her movement. She is going to use the rest of her movement ah, to stand up, unfortunately, fuck. but Eating. I just realized she hasn't used her movement. Oh, no, fuck it. Look, rule of cool, rule of cool. I'm going to say that, like, as she's knocked for right now, because it, it, this is a cool moment, and, like, the summoning of the Earth Elemental, like, you've had this for a while. This is absolutely the time to use this. I, I, will, yeah, I will say rule of cool. She moves, she moves through the air. Sure. <laughs> Let's say, like, there's a moment where she's kind of dazed as a result of this, like, counter strike from the earth elemental that she wasn't expecting um and as she sort of like stumbles a little bit very much dazed and confused that is the end of her turn um she does deal a fair bit of damage to the earth elemental though holy shit, shit. all righty um just so that you know niles that next strike did 26 points of damage okay it's a big, lyra big, is up big, next uh big piece of lyra sees this person right in front of her um coming at her basically with a, a, a long bladed scimitar, um, kind of like mutters under her breath. And then she is going to, um, oh, MB, you're right there. She can't thunder wave. Uh, actually, 15 foot cube. Nah, she, there's no way she can get there without thunder waving you too. Okay, that's all right. I was like, oh, maybe she could thunder wave out of here and like just, just get them out of the way. Um, in that case, then she will do a green flame blade with her um, with her quarter staff because she does have green flame blade. That is going to be uh, that's going to be a seventeen. That hits, and and then she'll bounce a bit of flame to a nearby creature within five feet and burn ember. She doesn't have to, though, does she? <laughs> I don't think so, no. <laughs> uh, creature of your choice that you can see within five feet. Ah, she'll just let that She'll just let that die. Um, okay, that's going to be a total of quarter stuff plus green flame blade. Maybe a total of 14 damage. That's not bad. That's not bad uh, at all. Pretty good. That's solid damage from Lyra. Um, Beautiful. And with the, uh, with the kind of like uh, the position where she's in, she's going to move a little bit to the side ember so that you're kind of getting a bit of flanking from it as well. Um, all righty. That is going to be Lyra's go. Just thinking bonus action. She's going to call out to the eagle. Um, Peck her eyes out <laughs> from uh, <laughs> over on the corner. Uh, the eagle, yeah. which goes on her turn, will it, it will in fact do that. It has advantage because she is prone. Come on. Peck her eyes out. <laughs> that is going to be a 16 doesn't hit. 18 does hit, though. That's going to be 10 points of damage. Nice. Is it the beak? Uh, talons, unfortunately. Oh, didn't pick her eyes out. Didn't pick her eyes out. Thrain, you're up next. Cool. So I'm in the web to begin with. So I'll need you to make a dexterity saving throw, please. Does my danger sense kick in? It says I have advantage on dex saving throws against effects that I can see. Uh, can I have a bit more context? Let me quickly have a look at the full danger uh, sense. I might need some more go. context on that one. Thank you. Uh, effects you can see such as traps and spells. I, I would say yes. Like, like he sees it being like cool. as a cast. Out. Yeah. yeah, I would say yes. Definitely. Cool. All right, well, I have advantage on this then. So 17. 17 oh, passes. Yeah. Absolutely passes. Uh, there is no effect of the web. You are you are completely fine. Cool. I almost like to think that I'm so, I'm like, cause I'm just so, so big. big. <laughs> yeah. I just walk yeah. through it. I'm going to yeah. walk around the Greco. I'm still going to stay within its thing. Um, you look to your left and see Niles battered and bleeding. This like brutal series of cuts, these two massive cuts across his body that it looks like his skin and flesh and feathers have just rotted from the inside out. Okay. And there's no sign of a blade cut on him, just these brutal wounds. It's very good that you reminded me because I was going to leave the Greek because I didn't really think it was a priority compared to the mage, but That's I don't fair. want to leave a Grick next to Niles now, seeing him in the state he's in. So I'm almost going to like walk around the Grick because I, because yeah, because um, Bart told me to go look for the mage, but then I'm going to, then as I'm sort of like getting ready know, to walking go past the Grick, getting ready, like Puh, you are nothing. The mage is more important. I look at Niles there suddenly because he's flown in. He's, he's caught my eye and um, I've just seen the state he's in. And then I, I have to protect my... You know when a my bird hand. flies into a window 
Niles is kind of like on the ground, like fluttering about a little bit, looking <laughs> really dazed and confused. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, uh, so obviously, can I, if I go here, is that possible? Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. All right, because I'm actually going to shield Niles from any other harm. Oh. And then I'm going to just smack into this Grick. Um, I need to take this out quick because one of my party members are obviously uh, Your companions hurt. is in danger. So, reckless attack. Uh, 20 to hit. Uh, 18 slashing damage. Nice. Fantastic. That one, which is great. <laughs> yep, brilliant. Uh, and, let's uh, do it again. 16 to hit on the Grick. 16 um, hits, and we always take the first damage, perfect. which is 12 in this case. So um, 14 because of the plus two. Thrain, how do you want to do this? Nice. Honestly, this is a very, this is just like thum, thum, like two massive strikes into it. Yep. Um, just like, because I'm going more for speed here to protect mm. Niles and I just leave this thing like in just yeah, two massive cuts across uh, completely obliterating it but like th this is like with more precision and effective like e efficiency than Thrain normally does because he really does like being that whirlwind yeah, but this absolutely. is like in, with, with Niles there this is like more he's more switched on so I just you still got more movement now that grip. you've killed it you wanted to use your movement to kind of get between my, Niles and the mage, you could do that, or move up into a different position. Yeah. Like, and get so, you out of the web. Let's see. I was still got movement. Yeah. Yeah. So then I'm probably moved, like, here. Oh. That's roughly, and then I moved yeah. here. So I'll probably use about 20 feet of movement overall, maybe. Yeah, I'd say 20 feet, yeah. Actually, it's probably even easier just going. Just go that this. way. Yeah, yeah, 5, 10, 15. So 15 feet of movement then. All right, so then I have another 25 feet of movement so i'm going to start moving to the mage so five ten let me know how the diagonal stuff works yeah probably 15 20. Thrain, as start. you get into position there oh. could you please make me yep. a perception check okay no 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 problem oh okay not bad perception 12 not 12. amazing no all good carry on my friend <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. Nothing to worry um, about. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to move into this space and start, like, scaling the rocks and just start saying, I know you're here, little one. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Brilliant. Uh, you can keep hiding if you like, but I'm going to find you. See this axe? It beheaded one of... Was it one of your Shadow Blade elites? One of your leaders? Yes. It's already got his blood on it, so give it time, little one. Give it time. Is this is this the same mage that was in the original encounter as well? The one that ran back? You don't you oh, guys well, don't know. I wish it is. I you wish it is know. as well, because that'd be you great. Am I just shooting bricks right now? Um, yeah. <laughs> I am happy to share. It absolutely fucking is. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing. Fuck yeah. And this so massive good. giant just like, yes, little one, you saw me behead. The other one, well, I'm coming for you now with the same axe. That's it's, horrifying. It's, it absolutely is the same one. In fact, I'm going to get you to roll me an intimidation check, please, with advantage, Thrain. Are we, oh, are we, the, are we the bad guys? Are we the bad guys? <laughs> so that's 24, mm. Owen. 24. Um, Thrain, you hear a tiny squeak, not unlike that of a small <laughs> mouse, a small field mouse. <laughs> and as you turn towards your left, you see the mage cowering in a gap in the rock looking on in fear at your <laughs> enormous form climbing up towards them. <laughs> Hello, little one. <laughs> uh, Ember, it is your turn. Yikes. Okay. Um, so, Bar's getting out of there. He doesn't need Flicker with him at the moment. So, I get Flicker to come... What's that? 5, 10, 15, 20 feet would be there. So, he's still got a little bit more movement left. Um... I might actually go in between, so use the full 30. Yep. I'm going to get him to teleport both Lyra and I down towards Niles. So 15 yeah, feet. Absolutely. That yeah, yeah, Lyra is willing. She will go with you. Perfect. So I'll get that throughout to make his next saving. Man, that's three. such a nifty little teleport. It's, it's so, so good. So good. Great. It's really handy because it teammates as well. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Uh, you said deck save. Um, yes. Oh. 
That's an eight. <laughs> hey. So that is a six plus my proficiency bonus, which is three. Full so damage. Full nine damage, mate. Fire damage. Yeah. Amazing. Perfect. Nine fire so, damage. Fantastic. We would be going 15 feet from where Flicker is. So 5, 10, 15, as close as we can get to Niles. Yep. And probably roughly in the same arrangement, so probably about that. Does Lyra have cure wounds? That's the question. No, just healing word. That's okay. Okay. So. Um, and animate dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when cure wounds won't cut it. <laughs> So that is my bonus, bonus action. action done with that there. So I'd probably then use Scorching Ray. Yes, um, son. You yes. Raise. Uh, nice. At this point in time, I mean, I've left that guy up on the, uh, the side. On the ridge. There, mm. Seeing that I've got... Mm, seeing as the other guy is prone and uh, looking a little bit vulnerable, I'd probably at least fire the first couple rays at him. So... That first one is a 17. Which one are you targeting, uh, sorry? The, uh, the oh, one the close actual, to you? No, no, oh. no. I'd be going for the actual uh, mage for the, itself. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the, uh, oh, for, for the mage or for the uh, drow captain, for the elite? Oh, sorry, drow captain. Drow captain. Awesome. 17 hits. 17 hits. Perfect. So that is... That is 10 fire damage. For the first ray, and you've still got two more. First ray. And sorry, do I still get advantage on both of those if he's still prone? So should so, I just roll So ranged uh, attacks don't get advantage. Ranged attacks oh, okay. get disadvantage. Um, <laughs> oh, but I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, yeah. I, I decided not to uh, not to speak up, mainly because uh, the other thing as well, right, is this person at the top of like a thing, like a, an outcropping and you're down at the bottom. Your view here is not fantastic. So rather than give you disadvantage, I gave them a slight... Uh, slight buff to uh, to ac and then i thought nah i'm not gonna be a dick i'll just i'll just leave it and we'll see how you go but right, i probably okay. should get you to roll again just to see if that first one does hit to yeah, be yeah fair. definitely i probably should because uh, the way the way still you hits. made it, still hits. You made still it sound hits. like it was actually harder to hit him <laughs> it's way harder to hit him uh yeah no yeah. It still hits even with disadvantage that still hits so 17 is enough so yeah uh 10 points of fire damage you've still got two more rays perfect so i'm gonna have another couple shots at him that is a 10 which is not gonna hit yep and just for the sake of, I'm going to fire one ray at the guy that's behind me, and that Lint. is a 13. So not enough, sorry. Not As enough. the no. the beam of fire goes wide, but you do hear a, a very satisfactory "ah shit" from on top of the. Uh, on top of the outcropping, as the first scorching ray strikes into the drow shadow blade uh, elite. Great, and from that. That's that be the end of my turn from there. Tapped. The Grix. Uh, there's only one left, and it needs to make a saving throw. Check saving throw. You watch as the Grix, currently bound by the webs in the center, goes, and then doesn't move. <laughs> Is it also in the fire? Uh, so the fire's slowly spreading out. Actually, that's a good point. Well, the thing is, right, it's going to move. So it has to move into the web to get to you guys. So it's immediately because that, that bit of the web's gone. It moves immediately gets stuck because it can't go anywhere else. And then when we get to Bart's turn, because that's when the fire was triggered, the fire is then going to expand and basically burn it again. <laughs> but that's the Grick's turn. <laughs> the Shadow Blade, uh, Shadow Blades on the top of the, uh, the areas up here. One of them's desperately trying to look for Harry. However, he is unable to see Harry. So he's going to take a shot at the eagle, trusting that uh, if he can get the eagle out of the way, maybe it's a better situation for his captain. Uh, 20 to hit, that's going to be 9 damage to the giant eagle flying overhead. And I need the eagle to make a uh, constitution saving throw. Come on, eagle. I believe that, in the eagle. That is a 16. That is a pass. Hey, <laughs> the eagle is now nice. immune to the poison for an hour. Yeah, good. Let's go. Um, that's fantastic. Uh, he will uh, absolutely be taking another shot with his hand crossbow, but it doesn't matter because the um, the eagle is immune to the poison. Uh, Twenty one hits, nine points of damage. Alrighty, is the eagle still up? Eagle still up. Uh, the other shadow blade, the one who you shot a, a scorching ray at Ember, um, he is going to actually move a little bit further up onto the outcropping. Lower a crossbow, sight you with it, and again, <laughs> fire off these shots. One at you, one at Lyra. Uh, oh, does a... 
Yeah, I roll. I rolled a. Uh, I rolled a d6 um, to see if it went for you, Nas. One, two was Ember. Three, four was Lyra. Five, six was you. Uh, it was a one and a three. So you're safe. Nice. Alrighty, Ember. Does a uh, 18 hit you? Five points of damage, and I need you to make me a Constitution saving throw. For Lyra, that is going to be a 16, which doesn't I hit her. That is 18. her armor class. Then it does just hit you. Sorry. I just hit. You. Okay. Yep. Yeah. No worries. Um, so that was how much? Sorry. Five points of damage, and I need you to make oh, me a Constitution saving throw, please. Uh, 19. Brilliant. You take no ill effects from this poison, and you are immune to the poison effects for an hour, uh, as the drow poison yeah. courses through your veins. But I mean, you're a large furball. You are a lot bigger. Your liver is much larger than what the drow had accounted for in this like slightly giant-like form, and much more powerful. The poison has no effect on you. That's the two shadow blades, the earth elemental. Um, earth elemental was told to smash. Earth elemental is gonna smash. <laughs> That's going to be two slam attacks. Both with advantage. Natural 20. I got a natural 20. Hey! hey. Oh, let's go! So, no one against us. For the first, so for the first roll was a natural 20 and a 17. The second roll was a 19 uh, and a 14. So they're both going to hit the natural 20. Uh, it's going to be plus 16 on this. Let me just quickly do the math. The first attack does 34 points of damage, oh. the crit. As you watch as the Earth Elemental just raises a massive fist, shards of crystal embedded in its hand, and just brings it down on top of the Shadow Blade Elite. 34 points of damage. That hurts. And then 14 points of damage for the second. Um, how's, how's she looking? She looks like she's taken a few hits. Okay. Yep. yep. Uh, the Earth Elemental is then going to stay exactly where it is um, and lean over her with this enormous like rocky stone face, this angular stone face. And as it leans in really closely, you can see it checking to see if she's still alive when it confirms that she isn't, pulls back its fist ready for the next attack. Um, Bartholomew, it is your turn. Okay. Um, now, obviously, this thing, there's, like, the vertical change to it, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to reach it or if it's just a check. Like, the, the grid, I'm within range of 30 feet to climb to this Shadow Blade. Sure. Will I get there? Do you want me to do a check? How's that going to work? Yes, yeah, so I'll need an athletics or an acrobatics check, and the walls here are about 60, sort of 50, 60 feet high. Oh, okay, so I wouldn't be able to sort of um, scale up. To get to him without a dash action. Without a dash, yeah, unfortunately not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, I think that's worth it. He's causing too much troubles with the crossbow. If that does hit someone and they fail that con save, it's going to be a world of hurt. It's pretty bad. Um, well, there's only there's only two people now who haven't yet tasted the drow poison, and that is Niles and Thrain. Oh no, and Bartholomew, you haven't tasted the drow poison yet, have you? Has Lyra been hit by it? Lyra just, uh, oh no, it missed her. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, okay, and no, you're right. All three people are all three people that are also close to this archer. So. <laughs> it's a good point. It's a good point. Um, yeah, gotta yeah go. let's do the athletics check. Fingers crossed. Okay, okay 19. Oh yeah, um, you nimbly and quickly begin scaling up the side of the walls. As you move into position, the light shining from your blade, you watch as the drow kind of shouts, uh, uh, ca covers his eyes, trying to sort of shroud himself from this light. Um, so action dashing, and I'm just going to be uh, with one hand still on the blade, getting ready for an attack. The other hand just helping me climb as quick as I can. Little uh, bursts of my, my light skeletal figure being an avian-like creature, um, but lacking of the wings. Uh, that will get me there. I don't have anything for a bonus action. I've got no spell slots left. I'm just going to hope that he can't hit me with, <laughs> with that and all. Um, look, 60 feet with the dash. I do have sort of choice of where I want to be standing near him. And I don't want him to regroup. So I think I'm actually going to stand here. I Locking him off from to... his escape. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Put myself between him and the mage. Brilliant. Um, yeah. Ember, could you roll me 2d4 as the Grick takes more fire damage? Sure can. Yay. That is a three. Now, because I. Oh, no, sorry. 
it's three. Yeah. Three points of fire damage. You watch as the Grick again begins burning in this web that's slowly beginning to disintegrate. Um, last up, we have the Shadow Blade Mage. Thrain, as you are climbing half up the edge of this this embankment and you begin basically like taunting the mage, threatening them, intimidating them very successfully. You watch as the mage sees you and begins panicking and they're going to cast uh, Arms of Hadar, basically just doing anything they can to get you away from them. Uh, could I please have you make me a strength saving throw? And I know you have advantage on these. Be- oh no, not is it strength save? No, it's just strength checks you have advantage on. So just... Flat uh, let me have a look. I'll have a look at my rage real quick. Saving, saving throws. Well advantage for rage. On, I gain advantage Shit. on strength checks and saving throws. I would like Whoa. a saving strength saving throw with advantage, which I think for you is like a plus seven, plus six, plus seven. 22. Almost wasn't a pass though. Eleven for the first. Well, uh, eleven is sketchy. <laughs> yeah. That was really sketchy. But the advantage came through with the rage. Um, that's fantastic. That's going to be half damage. Uh, that is going to be, uh, and this is. Um, do, 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 do. necrotic damage which i don't believe you have resistance to unfortunately yeah no, um good. so halved is going to be 14 points of sorry no no, no sorry halved is going to be seven points of damage <laughs> do you think this is enough to stop me little one <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> And as we get back to the top of the round, <laughs> so grim over there. <laughs> I know, I know, we're probably really excited to keep going, but we have reached a really good point oh. at the beginning of the initiative round. I reckon to to pause our combat partway through and come back in next time to see how this resolves. Oh, man, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I think that is a good point though. And if we if we go much longer, there's going to be things that are going to be much harder to kind of pause in the middle of. And I want to make sure that Ali doesn't miss the whole thing as well because. Obviously, with her not here, it's a bit it's a bit rough, and I, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to do stuff she wouldn't do. So, we will pause our session there. But don't worry, we're going to be back next week with more Return of the Giants. And if you are joining us for the first time and you haven't seen any of the previous episodes, hey, great news! They're all on YouTube. You can go check them out right now. Just type in Lost Archives Return of the Giants. We will be the first result, I promise you. If you just type in Lost Archives D and D or YouTube at Lost Archives D and D, you'll find us instantly as well. For those of you lovely people already watching us on YouTube, thank you so much. If you could hit that uh, subscribe button, make sure you uh, refill the Roll20 um, 20 bank. Obviously, every subscribe button is another natural 20 in the Roll20 roll bank for these guys to be able to access. So the more people subscribe, the more natural 20s they're going to get. I've just been told I cannot legally say that, but I'm going to stick with it anyway. Um, if you are listening to us on the podcast, again, thank you so much. I hope, uh, I hope you've enjoyed tonight's session. We will see you all again very, very soon. Stay safe, stay well, and uh, until next time, have a lovely time. Catch you guys later. Farewell. Don't go anywhere, Twitch people. We're going to go raid someone. Bye. Bye. Bye.